Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the podcast where we think we know everything, but we don't really know shit. But what I do know is I'm under the weather, so, but I still wanted to come on and chop it up with y'all, so I'm here, you know, fuck it. This weekend, I didn't get to see the Bears game. I was in Tennessee where they had that horrible hurricane. Um, Yeah, but my daughter was graduating, so I can't miss that, right? So that's where I was. I didn't get to see the Bears game. I did get to see highlights. And, shit, I mean, Justin looked pretty good, even though um, he threw a lot of passes and completed most of them. Excuse me while I dig in my nose. He he threw a lot of passes, but completed a lot of them and did go deep to DJ Moore, went deep to Cole Komet. Both of them had some decent games. Uh we saw we saw Mooney, who has been kind of disappearing lately. Um, we saw Tyler Scott. You know, I mean he he spread that ball around. Pause. <laughs> he spread it out. So, you know, it was fun to watch the highlights. And I wish I would have got to watch the game. And the defense, the defense looked all right. I mean, you got Jalen Johnson, he got a pick. Tremaine, he got a pick. Right place, right time. Um, you saw Nguike get a get a sack, although I don't think he's gonna stick. But we'll see. And your boy, Sweat. Man, that dude, man, he's a keeper. Anyway, we got a lot of show. Um, We have a guest schedule. Um, Bears alumni and Super Bowl champ, Dennis McKinnon. Silky D in the house. Uh, So, you know. Hopefully, he'll show up. You know, he's really hard to track down. Uh, but we did it. We got him. We got the Super Bowl champ in the house. Um, and if you missed it, we had another Super Bowl champ in the house, Jim Morrissey. Um, what was that, a few weeks ago? So if you didn't see that, check it out. You can go to YouTube, subscribe. And then you can watch all the episodes. You know, we have a lot of guys on here. Um, Yeah, man, it's a good show. So anyway, let's kick this off. Let's go. You are now rocking with the Chicago Clubhouse podcast, where they think they know everything. But honestly, they don't know shit. Summer league games, and they tell you about these new up and coming coaches. I think we should get rid of every motherfucking owner in Chicago. Enzo and Caruso both when they are on the quarter like your defensive generals. But they need to get that strong safety who's not scared to hit somebody. They really don't know shit. <laughs> Every time I hear Rick party at the end of that, I feel some kind of way. He said, they really don't know shit. <laughs> I feel some kind of way. I feel like I, I do know a little something. But yeah, so today we are going to have someone on who knows a lot of something, and he has a whole lot to say. Uh, yeah, my man, Fifty Grand Dennis McKinney, he's gonna he's gonna um, chime in a little later. 
Well, we got a lot of bears to talk about. Um, we got a lot of what ifs to talk about. Um, what if Matt Eberflus loses fucking job? What if they kick Gessie out with him? You know, so it, it, it's a lot of what ifs um, that we're going to talk about. Uh, what if they actually make the mistake of letting Justin go? What if it's possible? You know, um, there's a lot of what ifs. So we're going to talk about all of that. But we got our man, Silky D, up in here. So it's, it's going to be a good time. This is going to be a good time. So first, let me bring in my all-star team, my man who knows every single stat from every single team since the 80s and 90s, basketball and football. My man, J.B. What up, Tay? J.B., what's good, homie? Oh, man, you know, just I'm, I'm torn now, you know, celebrating the Bears win, but at the same <laughs> time, looking at like, uh, do we really want them to push for the playoffs or do we want them to? Man, come on, man. Now, we know in pro sports, there should not be such a thing as a tank So to get a certain pick. You should want to win every single game. You should want to destroy every single team that is put in front of you. You should. You so should. the Bears had to beat the Lions, man. They had to. Um, it it, just, here, here's my thing. Yeah. In saying that, though, I appreciated the way we looked. I really yeah. did. Yeah. You know, I, I'm – I'm not thrilled at the offensive game plan, but it worked. It worked. It, 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 it definitely um, – I'm thinking I didn't see any more than maybe two, maybe three screen plays called, which I'm happy with. Uh, we had a deep shot. Um, Justin catching – instead of throwing the check down, Justin catching DJ Moore over the top yeah. um, on the yeah. penalty. I uh, definitely like that because we that definitely need nice. to more than that. And just, that was nice. you know, he only, he only, I say only, but he only ran 12 times, but he still led the team in uh, rushing. Right. 33 attempts. I seen a couple of area throws, some drops. Uh, he did a Iraq. I don't know how he got out of the jam one time. I thought he was going to get a safety. Uh, he just, I, I did too. He got out of that jam. He got out of that jam, man. But see, that's, and, and, and see, stuff like that, plays like that is why I say, Pump your brakes on bringing in a rookie who may not have that field presence to do that, because clearly he's got a feel for the game that will help extend plays or you know just his running game, and, and, and that's something that we definitely need. Yeah, I don't think, and, and I got to give I got to give credit to the defense because I don't know if it's, we just got the Lions numbers uh, this particular time. The defense are pretty good too. Uh, your boy Jalen Johnson. Hey, <laughs> he asking for that twenty. <laughs> he gonna he is he gonna get it? Let's get into that. Let's get into that in a minute. Let's bring in uh, let's bring in the next All Star, my man who has that Hawks talk. But I know we for damn sure ain't talking about no Hawks tonight. I don't think my man Frank the Tank. What up? What up, fellas? What up, which? Hey, happy Tuesday. <coughs> Briscoe had 13 tackles, not 17. I saw 17. I saw him post game, it said 17 as well. Wait, 17. 13, yeah, 13, 13 is still a hell of a lot for a safety, too. So I'm still I saw 13 and four assists. <clears throat> well, that's 17. That no. still assists do count in his tackles, unfortunately. Yeah, he yeah. assisted. He assisted. He didn't make the tackle. He assisted. That, that, that goes yeah. towards total. That goes towards total. He has 17 total but, tackles. But I I, I, uh, I agree with JB. Like, I don't know where I'm. I'm happy because it was the Lions. I'm happy because it was a divisional win. So. Right. But, I mean, we'll, we'll take those. Yeah. We'll take that for sure. Yes, we got it. Jalen is he's yeah, he's asking for that money, man. Like he's playing, he's playing well. Those he must have got one of those little football machines where they just freaking whip the ball at his hands and he's catching them and 
at home in his living room right now because he's he's looking better. Exactly. So <laughs> we had we had our guest in here. Yeah, he just got knocked off. If you want to check in on him and see what happened. We we had him in here. Yeah, like, so. He's so he's so ready to go. I guess maybe he got so charged up. He was like, oh <clears> fuck. <throat> Hit the computer, maybe it knocked him up or something. I know he's ready to go. Did I see his headband on? Yeah, he had the he had the eighty five bear headband. Yeah, he had yeah. the yeah. 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 You gotta go, you gotta go call him up and be like, Uh-oh. if he was good, because we were literally about, just oh here he's back. All right, you about to fuck y'all up. He man, got the, he got the headband on. Boy, he ain't playing. I'm ready to get him in. He ain't playing with shit. Let's bring him Let's in. Give Super him the Bowl, Super Bowl champion. Bears alumni, y'all ain't ready. Keeping it all the way real, Dennis McKinnon. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Yeah. I know you guys are trying to raise my blood pressure, aren't you? <laughs> I, the whiskey's doing that for me. You know, you know, I I can't I can't have alcohol on on camera. Oh, understandable. So what's up, Silky? What do you mean, what's up? You know, this is late for me. I'm a, I'm a retired man. I, I don't I don't stay up this late. <laughs> you you like you would tune in to our shows every once in a while at this late. What were you doing those times? Oh, I was stalking you guys, seeing. What oh, that, was okay, going gotcha. On. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of times I wanted to call call in because call your guests were lying. <coughs> oh, oh! Let, 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 hit us with that one. Oh, you know I'm a fact checker. I, I, I <laughs> you know, love fact checkers. You know, a, lot these, a lot of these guys be having amnesia, but I keep Ooh. it real. I, so I'm not gonna ask who. I won't ask no who. I won't ask. Oh, well, name. go down your list. I can tell each one of them that been lying. Ooh. I, I don't. I don't I mean, we got I'm, a pretty big list. I'm scared. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm scared. Yeah, yeah. Y'all don't. Y'all don't vet people before y'all put them on, do you? Uh, to the best of our ability, yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah, no. No. Yeah, we, just, we always want everyone to keep it real. Just say what you feel. Say how you feel. Yeah. That's what we do just, here. Well, let's let's, let's, let's 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 start off with a bang. Bang it. What's our biggest? What's our biggest win this year? This one, Detroit. Yeah, how far <laughs> we have fallen. <laughs> that's You're not kidding at all, man. <laughs> so, yeah. so let me tell you, um, between Kurt Cousin and Jared Goff, anytime they've come to Soldier Field when the temperatures under forty, Bears always win, right? Should be no surprise. It should be yes. Should no, anytime it's under forty degrees, any dome team that comes in here does not win. The Lions, do the Lions play in the dome? Uh, uh, really? Are you kidding me? Am I? Am I? I, I don't watch Detroit. Ford Field is a dome, Frank. I don't fucking. I hate Detroit. I don't go to their. Show. I hate Detroit too. That's we call <laughs> pros and hoes in Detroit. Yeah, exactly. Oh, pros and hoes. I like that. I'm making a T-shirt. You said pros and hoes. That's all you got in Detroit. <laughs> so I am not mad at that. Woo! <laughs> That's fun. But but so, here, here's something, Silky, because we felt that way a couple of weeks ago. Remember when we beat Minnesota? We felt the same way. Like, eh, it's Minnesota. Wait, didn't you have a quarterback that just came off the street? Yeah, Josh Dobbs. Let's be real. Come I on, mean, it, it was it was a crowded street at least because you know, it was a crowded was, street, and Justin crowded. Justin was still on the sideline. I mean, let, let stop. We won twelve to ten with no offense, no touchdowns, no touchdowns. I mean, it so ugly it, game. It's, it's, it's I, I don't know. I, seventeen screen passes. Yeah, seventeen screen passes. Oh, were, were, that's it. That's so, what got my blood flowing. So let so let me ask you because this is a general question. Okay. Why is it in the <clears throat> National Football League almost every team that has a backup quarterback when the starter goes out, the backup comes in and they are they won't let them throw the ball downfield. If all you can do is hand the ball off, why are you on the roster? Exactly. I mean, you could have a running back run the ball off. It's uh, – and I don't want to hear this about with the new collective bargaining agreement. We went from two a days to one a days. Backup's not getting any reps. But you spend more time working on your choreography for celebrations. Your yeah, backup right. need reps. I agree with that. 
Uh, yes. Yes. That like when, I, when I'm seeing a special teams guy making a basic ordinary tackle and celebrating like he won the Super Bowl, it's just like, God damn, dude, pump it. Come on. Yeah. We need to get rid of that gay gene. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the only thing that I've seen <laughs> when it kind of differs, Silky, is in Cleveland, which we'll talk about a little later because we got them coming up. Yep. Joe Flacco kind of came in all guns blazing off the sofa. He so did. some coaches, yeah, but 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 he got a he got a Super Bowl ring one, and that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, he, he got a hundred million dollar contract two, and he's been there. Indeed, it's a little different. Indeed. You know, so like I said, it's just just the fact that the quality of play has been so bad because a lot of the stars are not just getting hurt; they're out for the year. Yeah, and I don't understand when you don't even hit anymore. You don't even have two days and. Uh oh, we got you Uh-oh. frozen there, Dennis. He froze up. But I, I I like where he was going with that too, because I I've been always saying that with the when not oh he's back uh, there he is. Yeah, so it, it's, yeah, go um, ahead finish that. We heard two a days. Well, there are no two a days. There's one a days, yeah, and uh, one a days, no conditioning, nobody hits anymore. And when you're talking about safety in the league. How is there safety when nobody wears knee pads? That is true. Nobody wears knee pads anymore. I mean, so, um, but for me as a, as a former player, there's no way I could run if I got 10 pounds of jewelry on. <laughs> they, are they have changed, they they have changed so many rules in this league, and we make excuses for everything when they don't live up to expectations. So is it what happened when you pay guys? Ah, froze up again. Uh, that does not exist anymore. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Well, yeah. I want to ask you this because of that exact same statement. Does yeah. it seem like players get hurt more now because they're I not know. hitting? Well, they're getting hurt more now because the body is not built for contact. Yeah. Exactly. And if you're, really- if you're basically on the couch during preseason. You don't dress out. You don't play. Almost every starter, second team, or every draft pick during preseason does not play a down. So where's your timing? There's no timing. There's no timing. Yeah. We our offensive tackle, our first round pick, right said it was like I played ten snaps in preseason. So yeah, I was rusty the first few games. So I wish I was you able. Got to play everybody more. wearing a skirt, yeah. and then you want them to put on pants when the season starts. How and how was that collectively bargained? Because is that what the players wanted, or that's what the owners wanted? Oh, he oh, got that boost uh, mode up again. He got that boost mode of Wi-Fi. No, that's not it. You know, I, I think that the government's watching. You know how that works. <laughs> <laughs> he lie. So, so say that again. You said you don't think you don't believe so that that's not <laughs> from the collectively. No, I mean. Owners. Well, look at it from top to bottom. You went from two days to one a days. You cut padded practices in half. Um, you changed damn near 20 different rules. You partnered with FanDuel and DraftKings, um, fantasy football. There's more gambling than you can shake a stick at. And, and you're protecting your players every possible way you can. You can't cut outside the tackle box. You can't cover the center <laughs> on any special teams. You can fair catch on every kickoff. You can't touch a receiver after five yards. You can't touch the quarterback. You can't touch a receiver in the middle. He's a defensive receiver. It's like, what What has happened to the game? Flag football. Yeah, it's. You know, so I don't I don't really get excited about what I watch. It's kind of I'm, I'm not emotionally invested because we were held to a higher standard than what I see today. The board, the bar is so low. Um, and then we, what do we do? We complain and we protect players when they don't play well. Criticism is part of the game. Oh, great. Be a man. You're all on auditioning every week. And you're supposed to. If you don't play well, you should get benched or cut. We went through that, but now everybody's got a pacifier in their mouth. <laughs> I, I I agree. That's crazy because you guys <laughs> are away taking those hits so that now guys can basically not get hit look good playing football it's like me trying to golf i mean i got good clubs i look good out there but i ain't no good golfer and so you know and you look at all the stats of it (coughs) 
the government. Told him you played Detroit. I who's impressed by that? I think it's impressive to most because we actually won. Yeah, and we did and play nothing, well. Nothing more than that. And Detroit is supposed to be a really good team. Yeah, they're one of the best teams. They're oh. Yeah. Well, they're one of the best teams. Okay, they are one of the best teams. They're some no, they're supposed to be. But But they 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 always choke when it comes down to postseason play and everything. But their Achilles heel has always been Jared Goff. Yeah, I I agree with that. I do. He fits well in the system that he's in, but when it comes down to having to win with the ball in your hand, with the game on the line in a playoff game, I don't know if I'm dressing Jared Goff. And Jared Goff doesn't want the ball in his hand when the game matters. I agree, yeah. That's the worst even kind of franchise quarterback you can – Even when he was with the Rams. <laughs> well, no, they were just – Yeah, but Super he had Todd Gurley then. Yeah, I was just going to say, Todd he had a good defense and Todd Gurley. Todd Gurley was time. nice. Todd yeah. Gurley was nice. And then when Todd Gurley started getting hurt and having those nagging injuries, Jared Goff was non-existent, and that's why they traded him. Well, Detroit's got a good run game. They went out and got our running back right now, and David Montgomery, who I didn't like to see go. But, I mean, and he looks really good in Detroit. Well, David Montgomery was let go because you have a running quarterback here in Chicago. Almost every highlight you see with Justin, he's running. He ain't throwing. Y'all, y'all I mean, we, I think media in this town will ignore. Government again. Damn it. I, you yeah, can't have a franchise it, run. I don't know why it keeps doing that. It's all good. You can't have a. It franchise. only does it for like a split few seconds. So yeah, I mean, you know, I, I mean, do we want the? <clears throat> but I mean, uh, like, it, it with, yeah, with, yeah, like I don't. We we always talk about this when <laughs> we talk about Justin mainly from last year. We don't want him running as much as we did last year. And I think Justin still has a lot to prove, but I just think the coaching staff, mainly offensive coordinator, like the play calls are just like, he kind of opened it up a little bit in the second half for Justin last week versus Detroit. And he had a very good second half throwing deep balls, 15 yard downfield passes. But with Justin, I understand he's got the legs and he's got the arm, but if you still get pressure on him, that's where it's going to hurt him with his, with the ball. Cause those turnovers are still there. Justin still has flashbacks of how bad the offensive line has been. So he mm-hmm. panics. That's what I feel, yeah. He panics every time yep. he thinks. He thinks he's going to get hit. He thinks he's going to just get beat down. I mean, he's got PTSD for a reason, though. I mean, yeah, that is true. And against very good defensive teams, he's not going to be able to get outside as much as he has in the last few weeks. Yeah, that's going to happen this Sunday when they play Cleveland. That's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, Cleveland's I'm one of the best yeah, defenses. Yeah. It's, about, it's all about discipline. That's all. That's going to happen a lot. But but here's the thing, Silk. Let me ask you this, too, because with that being said, it seems that Getsy doesn't tailor the offense to what Justin does best or even what the team does best. He tailors it to what he thinks the other team is going to do best, which is weird to me. Because <laughs> when you all line up, we knew Walter was getting the ball. We knew play action was coming. We know Jim was going to throw you in the slot, hit you on the deep, and we knew he was going to hit Willie on the deep. But you had to stop it, right? Did you hear me? No, he might be frozen up again. Terry, government, government hit the pause button on him for a second. There we, there we go. go. He's back. I think you need to get him a hot toddy. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but I also oh, understand damn. that. That that coaches have a lot of egos, I a lot. And sometimes when you have great players, you're allowed. You're supposed to adjust to them, not the other way around. They, that's you know we, we had Jimmy. All the time. So when we had Jimmy Mack, we had basically Jim would call the game from the line of scrimmage. So there was always an either or based on what we see, right? Um, and you adjust based on what they do every series. There's not a lot of freedom that I see Justin has. And that has a lot to do with coach not allowing him to have freedom. Yeah, but he'll throw him on the bus if, it, if, all, if the offense doesn't do well. He low key. I don't know if you all how much you all paid attention uh, last week. He did it last week. He threw uh, kind of slightly subliminally through Justin on the bus. But again, this is the same guy that on national television said. His offense isn't designed for one person to be the star, meaning DJ Moore. And that was after he had 230. 
And when every other team yeah. in the NFL feeds their star. And that was also after, even like after what we just saw this past week, J- DJ Moore had zero targets in that first half. Zero targets. Your number one well, guy. Good, well, good defense will take away your best player. And uh, and then you have to make adjustments to tie to that. Your other players got to get involved. Remember now, everybody on that offense is getting a paycheck. You have a job to do. And sometimes the game plan takes you out of the goal game. You got to find a way of providing assistance otherwise. You know, and so with that, some games you're gonna blow, you're gonna blow up. Some games you're gonna be non-existent. That's called life, you know. And uh, I wish that you know Justin was a, uh, was with, DJ was a little, involved a little bit more than just screens and over routes. Why? Why is he not on any special teams? Um, maybe afraid to get him hurt. Yeah, I mean that's how this league is nowadays. On everything. So what y'all talking about? Yeah. He can't keep it. You know, my thing is, if he creates field position, he should be returning kicks. Oh, is, 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 Be- oh. is Beelis Jones still on the squad? Unfortunately, <laughs> yes. Oh my Wait, god! Uh, and I don't know. Like, I, I that was my cue right there. Hold on, we don't call him that <laughs> here. Hi, I'm David Jones. That, that's the boy <laughs> for us. Oh, that's cold. That is cold. I mean, hey. I knew you'd appreciate that, though. <laughs> yes. Yeah, he need to get in a hot tub. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. But he no, he man. had a, a decent kick return. He only hit – well, first of all, he only had two of them. He only had two, yeah. Yeah, because the Lions only scored, you know, whatever. But I would still say, to, to your point, where is the scripting of plays to get those guys a ball? Because even still, uh, I believe DJ has six catches, right? Five, six yeah, touches. all in the second. He had six and ten targets all in the second half. All in the second half. But all in the second half. What if you notice what the Lions did? They crowded that line of scrimmage. They took that screen. Like it seemed like Getsy was just dying to throw the screen, but they were too far up press. Man, you can't. The screen was dead. It's like he don't know what else to call. Well, I mean, the thing about it is, you can always get your best player involved, and you can scheme plays oh, just well, for him, too, just by formations or by motion. Very simple to do. Does not take a genius to see that. Everything about this game is about matchups. It's all it is. If you got the right horses, they will run over everybody. If you don't, it becomes strategy, you know, and you try to control the clock. But if, when you got playmakers, you script plays to get to your playmakers. How come everybody else does it, but we don't? Everybody throws a slant. We threw like six all year. This, this, this is what this is what we throw, um, Dennis. This is what we throw. Uh-oh. Call a screen pass. If that doesn't work, call it on the other side. I know. That, that's that's our offense. That, that's something we always talk about, and, it's nice, and that was a question I wanted to ask you too because I always love asking yep. people this question. When And this goes back mainly for the Vikings game the week before, but yeah. when you have a team who blitzes a lot, a lot of people blitz Justin Fields because of what you said. He gets shell-shocked. He's so like tempted that he's he knows he's going to get hit because he still doesn't have his trust in his offensive line yet. And when you blitz him, he struggles, he panics, he freaks out, throws a bad pass, fumbles, whatsoever. But what play calls do you usually call when you blitz? I understand screen passes is one of them, but it's not the only thing. Like, what other things can you call? Because one thing that we know with Getsy is he never calls these. Well, there's a there's a trick to this. Um, most blitzes – the side adjustment for wide receivers either slant or take all the pinning on the coverage. Mm-hmm. If you have a running quarterback, there's normally a spy in the middle of the field. Mm-hmm. So if Justin rolls left or right, the spy is going to run with him. But the best play that you can call is a mm-hmm. tight end screen. Komet should be getting a lot more passes. He does get a decent amount of screens. But he doesn't even call that tight end screen. like Not, not enough. No. Not a, or even chip because Com- Komet – now here's the thing. I look at Komet more of a zone beating tight end, not necessarily a man beating tight end, which means he should kind of like navigate the middle of the field, corners and outs, right? Silky? Yeah. But if you roll out that way, wouldn't it kind of be in your best interest to have the tight end do a, a out that way or over let, route? Let, towards- let, let me say this for 50 million. Ooh, we froze up at 50 million. 
There it is. And for fifty million, he should be able to do a whole lot. Otherwise, he should never got paid. And I'll, 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 I'll say this: when you pay people this kind of money, don't tell me about limitations. Mm. Mm, yeah. There should I be like expectations that. based on what we're paying you. And so, from that perspective, Justin will always extend plays, which means that he's going to take away your double. So Komet should be one on one in the middle of the field most all day. That scares me. That it does. Yet he doesn't call that. No, he doesn't. And see, what you can do is you can take Komet out and put Mooney in the slot. Mm-hmm. I don't know why they don't put Mooney in the slot more. I, I like really I said, man, wasn't he supposed to be a number one? He was, and that was an epic fail. And then we went out and got DJ Moore. Yeah. Like. And D, now, now you can say he's our number two. I don't just know if he's the number, he's number, two, number but I don't know if he ever was a true no, he was, number he, one. He was like no, a he one was, B. That, one that was a test. We were seeing if he can. And be I don't think player. he has the full route tree, Dennis. Does he? He don't need a route tree if you're open. One. Um, oh, I like that. And the other, and the other thing about that, we yeah. went through the same thing with Allen Robinson. We paid him all that money to come in here and found out he really wasn't a number one. Every just because you played on a bad team and you come here, you're not gonna be Superman. Doesn't work that way. If you suck somewhere else, you can suck here, but we've already paid you. Good. Ah, true. Very true. You see, and that's, a, that's, a, that's a problem that we have. We, we we will pay guys from another team before we've seen what they can do in this uniform. I agree with that. Yeah. The old the only thing I said. Now, we can all differ about the Claypool thing because at the time, I was not upset about it. No, I wasn't either. But I don't think they used him correctly. But now you have a chance to fix that mistake because now you have a number one. You have a true – in my opinion, DJ Moore is a damn good receiver, and I like him. He can't do it by himself, though. Nope. Mooney needs to step it up. Or even Komet, like, needs to get that second – but I mean, I don't see it. Don't get enough reps. Yeah, and that was one thing I was gonna say too. We're still, and I know we can say it's our offensive line in regards to this. Komet is still blocking more than sixty-seven percent of the time. He's not going out there to catch balls. Oh, Which, we should be, we should be running a three receiver offense. If 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 Justin's gonna be in the shotgun almost ninety-five percent of the time, we should be in a three receiver offense with a running back that motions left or right depending. If there's not a blitz. So Justin knows where the man is, where the hot's coming. So he automatically knows where his second receiver is. The game ain't changed in 100-plus years. And I laugh about what I see. Like, they've never seen this coverage before. It's the same coverage. Yeah. That that makes me think about Joe Montana motioning Roger Craig out the way to dictate coverage. (laughs) It doesn't change. You're right. It doesn't change. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the Bears have been very famous, going back to Trubinsky, to overvalue players. And we overvalue players and we give away draft picks or we trade and give away too much for a person who comes here who does not produce. Is but that seems to be the norm organizational flaw. Yeah, that's well, the organizational flaw is we have a lot of coaches nobody wanted. Damn. <laughs> you know, that's who's running the show. A lot of teams don't want none of our coaches. Hey, but we now now wait, now wait, wait, hold on. So let me go back. We do some stupid stuff when it comes to coaches. We we have certain guys that you should get, a la Bruce Arians, but we take Mark Tressman, right? I'm not mad at the Wall State years. I don't know how you feel about that. But at least he was sort of proven, and I'm using the quotation mark, sort of proven. Yeah. Defensively. Yes. Mm-hmm. But then when you get the Trashman and you come in, then you go get John Fox, but you don't give John Fox what he needs to do what John Fox is normally doing. I mean, you fired Lovey in ten to six year. Then you don't pick up Jim Caldwell. You pick up this Eberflus and Getsy Cat. Like, what? What is it about us that we don't get that guy? We normally don't, don't get, get that player either. But we don't, don't get, get it twist. Guy. Don't get it twisted with John Fox. Remember, John Fox had Peyton Manning. But John I'm Fox also went to the Super Bowl with who is his quarterback? Jake oh, DeLong. Jake, Jake DeLong. DeLong. Well, well, let's not get it twisted. Jacksonville and Carolina doing the expansion were able to go out and buy players. Very true. Both of those teams made the playoffs their first year. So that's an anomaly. Yeah. Right. 
But I think it was more like the Bears actually went out and got somebody who had somewhat of experience there. Uh, they, uh, yeah, they had the number one scoring offense in the league because of Peyton Manning. Let's be, be, be honest. And you're not wrong on that. You know, and, and John Fox, just another one who uh, got experience, got the right squad, got the right quarterback, got all the credit when he wasn't that good, had a heart attack. And then um, well, who took over for him at head coach? Um, linebacker from Dallas. Got fired from, uh, from the Washington Commanders this year. From the oh, Jack Del Rio. Jack, Del Rio. There okay. you go. Jack Del Rio. Oh, right. I forgot he was the kid. I forgot he was their coach. Oh, them, I'm just trying to tell you. <laughs> it's so a lot. I mean, Lovey got fired because what? Lovey only knew defense. I think he had, got and fired he had a lot of the week before that last game. Remember, he beat he uh, elected not to go for it, and they lost to Minnesota the week before. I know. I mean, and uh, so we we have a tendency to talk about what we used to have and what now. All I know is every time they said we have the best offense ever, they can't score points. You know, and <laughs> you know it's it's a, just a situation. It's a collaboration. We have always been a running and a defensive organization. But the game has changed. It is. It's become more seven on seven. That's all we're really seeing right now. Because you can't you can't touch anybody. Defensive right. ends are getting a they're getting a we call it a Usain Bolt start to run at the quarterback because you can't cut them. See, during my day, you can cut outside the tackle box. You know, you're gonna hesitate before you run up run up in here. Right, right. So now they get free reign. I mean, it, it, it's like but I that said, goes it's to easy what to get a that huh? goes to what you just said. The premium is not on the product, it's on the outcome. Yeah. So the gambling, the um uh, sponsorship, it's all money driven because now and I and I and I'm and I'm glad to see Silk. I love when you come on because I know you're gonna give it to us hundred percent. Then that's what we want, man. And just just yeah, a heads up in case anyone noticed, Terrence had to hop off because he wasn't feeling good. So we brought in Mr. Chicago. Oh, guy. I know, Terrence. I'm like, you should get call nine one one. He's all right. I know. I guess what I said. Hey, hold on. He got to fight through that. Yeah, we brought in that. we brought in Mr. Chicago to fill in for foul mouth, who uh, has the biggest <laughs> mouth or the biggest foul mouth in the city. But Mr. Chicago is right up there with him. So uh, the the only person that should be allowed to wear fifty A is Wilbur Marshall. I, listen, I, I agree. Listen, but, but listen, we we retired so many numbers. Yeah, we, we, we can't retire <laughs> anymore. You're not wrong. Yeah, listen, all three: Wilbur Marshall, uh, Mike uh, Secretary, and uh, uh, um, Otis Otis Wilson. Uh, Otis Wilson. All, right. all three of those guys deserve their jerseys to be retired, but we we ran out of numbers, so I mean, we had no choice. But Roquan Smith, obviously, he held that number down for a number of years for us. Yeah, he so did. I, I appreciate him for that. But, uh, yeah, right. yeah. Who, who did we have? Who did we have on this past week? Who also said Wilbur Marshall should be literally? That was Jim Morrissey. Jim Morrissey straight up yeah. came out and said the exact same well, thing. That, so, that was one yeah. of the best linebackers, if not the best linebackers he's ever that, seen. Let alone he's the ever best played. linebacker core. Marshall. Well, he was. He was the reason. Man. He he was the reason why we did not repeat in '86. Oh, because he went oh, to yeah, Washington. Yeah. Yep, he went to Washington. No, they let him go to Washington. Oh, um, yeah. Five years, six million guaranteed. And for those who don't know, he was the first place in the church te change team that created free agency. Oh, Wilbur was? I Wilbur did not Marshall. know that. You I didn't, I didn't don't know, know that. that. I didn't know that. I, yeah, I didn't know, know that either. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, he did leave to go to Washington. He, go, he goes to Washington. He gets yeah. defensive player of the year. They win the Super yeah. Bowl. And he's still yeah. not in the Hall of Fame. That's oh, yeah. That's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. So we we and we ended up letting go Marshall and we let Buddy Ryan go to the Eagles and take them to the NFC title game, man. Like, oh man, the Eagles <laughs> got in the way of this team from from preventing us from really being a true dynasty in that era, man. And, and that's why it's been so long since we've reigned supreme over the NFL. That that's oh man. That's so what I say to that is there were so many great players on um, back in the day on my team on both sides of the ball that when it was time to pay them, we had like we had no money. But we had already we had delivered the prize that they never thought that we would deliver in a few years. So when I see players today that don't play hurt yeah. at all, OK, never. they don't sacrifice nothing. They got all this guaranteed money and they complain about everything. I'm like, do you know how good you have it? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, they have it good and because of you guys. Yep. And the rules because change to guys. cater them too. To cater to them. Absolutely. What? Yeah, but you know what? And they can't they can't take criticism at all. No. No, no, no. They don't appreciate criticism. They 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 claim that it's coming from a, a detrimental or hurtful place when you're simply just talking about their production or lack thereof on the field. You're not talking about them outside the sport, like as a man or anything like that. We're, sh- we're simply talking about how you're producing on the field or how you're not producing. It's, it's just that simple. It's, it's I mean, that simple in the, fact, in, in the fact that we make the same mistakes and here in what, week 12 that we were making in week one, that's coaching. That's definitely coaching fundamentals and everything. But I want to go back to to just something you said earlier, Silky, but just something we've talked about before in the past. Yeah. The way you played the game, even if you weren't getting the ball in the passing game, you were laying somebody out in the blocking game. Like, yeah, they are. just don't take that pride anymore. No. Nah. You have a handful of receivers that do. But- e- e- EQ does, but yeah. he can't give it to you. He can't give it to you on the actual receiving game. No, he can't. He give it to you on the blocking side, whereas I tell you, as Jimmy Man, he was like, "Oh no, he wouldn't go to war if he didn't have uh, Silky, William, and Emory Morehead." Yeah. Dennis Jimmy, he wouldn't do it. Everybody watches film on Monday morning, and you watch it as a team. So when your teammates see you loafing, not giving any effort, that is the worst feeling in the world. And the coach will pause that play and run it back. You know, you didn't you miss the assignment. You missed the block. You didn't even hustle. Why are we paying you all this money? And see, back then, we call you out in front of your teammates. Yeah. <laughs> but nowadays, it's like, no, I, you know, I really don't feel like playing. I don't feel good this week. I'm like, you're going to take two weeks off because, oh, you have a sore hamstring? Don't that's you like have, that's that's like that don't you have a specialist that takes yeah. care of me? Yeah. They literally have massage therapist on call. They do. Oh, no, you they, they, they have to travel with them. On the sideline. I'll give you a massage yeah. line on the sideline. Shit. Well, they they travel with them. The tent might also be for massages. Y'all ain't listening. It's about the money, not the yeah, game. I agree with that, too. Of course it is. Yeah, you listen. Yeah, when it comes out to all of this for, for these players today, for the majority of them, I won't say it, 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 it doesn't matter to none of them. Is there are some of them who actually take pride in wanting to go out there and win and produce and, and give it their all, you know what I'm saying? But for the most part, these, these cats that's in there in the league today, they care more about the money and the status of being professional athletes more than anything mm-hmm. else. But I, I want to ask, I want to ask you a question about the '85 Bears because yes, more sir. specifically about Buddy Ryan. Like, what was it like in practice when Buddy Ryan called people out? Like, what was it like? Because I remember seeing that documentary on the well, '85 Bears that season. Well, Buddy, how can I say this? Buddy, um, when I when Al Harris and Todd Bell held out. And were replaced by literally Wilbur Marshall and Dave Dorson. There was a lot of hate there. Buddy um, could be racist when he wanted to be. Ooh, really? Wow! Big time. Okay. okay. I didn't know. I mean, he called he called Richard. Then he called Richard Robert. He would not address Wilbur. You know, he he you know it it Singletary was his guy, but he's but Mike was also the informant. Yeah. So you got to be careful what you say to Mike. And Mike was the reason why Wilbur Marshall didn't get re-signed. So there's a lot wow. of stuff that go. Buddy gets a lot of credit. But let me tell you about that great 46 defense. Mm-hmm. That was Fensick. That was Otis. That was Singletary. That was Hampton. That was McMichael. But they weren't winning until Dent got here. And- yeah. TSU. Yeah. Was the bad. government got you stalled there for a second. So the Bears had no offense back then. And the 46 defense had a name, but they weren't beating anybody yeah. until they got the right pieces. And then you don't want to give credit to the guys that turned this whole organization around. So, yes, the 46 was named after what? A slow, a slow guy who couldn't cover anybody? Yeah. Yeah. So that That's that forty six wasn't nothing until we got the horses. <laughs> and Dent, man, Dent was out. He, he was a Bronco out there. <laughs> well, mean, to put it this way: yeah. Dent gets here, they they move Hampton inside. If Hampton's still outside, he doesn't make the Hall of Fame. Period. Good point. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, I can Good definitely point. agree with that. 
Yeah, that's they, a good I mean, point. yeah, Hampton definitely worked better inside, especially knowing that he had the, uh, Richard Dent around the side of him. Like having those two on the same line, man, that, that would have scared the living hell out of me. Yeah, we're Michael, Michael and Perry on the inside rotating at nose. You know, people forget about that. I mean, and uh, so, like I said, it it was just Wilbur Marshall was our Swiss Army knife. He could cover your best, your your running back, your starting tailback. He could cover your tight end one on one, which allowed us to blitz. And Fitzy was never allowed to be in coverage by himself. Yeah. Really? See, I I would have never guessed that. I wouldn't have guessed that either, man. That's Keeping it real, I like it. Yeah. But follow up question to that though, that Monday night game against the Dolphins. See, I get to a lot of arguments about this team in particular being the greatest Super Bowl team ever assembled, without question. But it's been a lot, it's a lot of people that push back on that with the idea that, okay, we got blew out in that Monday night football game against the Dolphins. And I always tell people, South Beach won that game. Like Miami didn't win that game. South Beach won that game because a lot of you guys had never been in Miami before, was out there partying the night before, kicking it, hanging it, having a good time the whole night. And we you had all a few 85 on players field. out here tell us that, too. Hey, so still, he's from Florida, though. What you mean? Let, what, let what, me, what, let, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let, I'm let, saying everybody else wasn't, though. So it's like yeah. they first time being in Miami, then Miami Vice was real, real popular back in those days. So – you think about how much party went on before. Well, uh, everybody uh, was running uh, on fumes. What was that you know, like? Speculation doesn't mean facts. We were not out partying. First thing, let me say that to you. All right. The difference in that game in the second quarter, third and seventeen twice. Nat Moore in motion. They figured out the weakness when they ran motion. We didn't kick the coverage to the other side. The linebackers running with him. If you don't get him off the line of scrimmage, he's gone. Same thing that Doug Williams did when Washington beat us in the playoffs the next year. They found a weakness. Okay. It was all about if the guy goes in motion, you need to kick the coverage to, the, to your coverage on the backside so he picks him up so your linebacker doesn't have to run across the formation to catch it. So all those guys in the slot are little guys who can run. It's all about scheme. And we told Richard and we told Hamp. If Marino doesn't get outside the pocket, they can't beat us. On both those plays, they went inside. Marino got outside the pocket. People forget it was the 13th week, Monday night football, full moon, and the Pro Bowl selection was the next week. Mm-hmm. Guys were trying to get sacks. It was not about the team that night. It was about individuals that for one quarter, we did not play as a team, and it cost us a perfect season. Yeah, and I'm, I'm pretty sure Don Shula was happy about that, knowing that we were going to – we were going to tie that record and, and possibly break that record. Oh, he, he is. He, Don should be very thankful we didn't see his ass in the Super Bowl. <laughs> I, I, I believe it was also Jim Morrissey who came out and said that they, re, you guys yep. really wanted to play Miami. Yeah, I remember Dan Marino even said he was just happy to leave out that stadium alive because because of how many quarterbacks got pulled off from well, stretches every week. <laughs> if memory serves, though, was that the second or going into the third quarter? We kind of figured something out with that because we almost had a pick. Matter of fact, I think it was the fourth quarter. We had a pick, and it bounced off, and Duper was just by himself. He was right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then and that just laid off. out. And then that's yeah. the floodgate. Because matter of fact, Jim McMahon came in that game like in the fourth quarter. Sure. He wasn't he came to in late right third. Game. Came in late third. But people forget that Steve Fuller. Steve Fuller started, started that game. Man, yeah. the, and the first play of the game was a screen pass to me. He threw it six feet over my head. So you just let the defense uh-huh. know you're scared. Damn. And then when Jimmy Mack came in, winning, we had lost our mojo that night. So Peyton needed to get the record. So whatever play Dicker called, Walter, Jimmy Mack changed the play. We're going to run Walter until he get these 100 yards. So he can get yeah. the nine straight consecutive days. So yeah. there was a lot of respect and class amongst us. Yeah. And we told Buddy and, and, and Dicker, say, without us, you don't beat anybody. So let us do what we do best, okay? And yeah. uh, and, I, and I think with that, we played for each other. That was the most important thing, you know? And uh, we weren't pointing the fingers when things didn't go well. You know, we just need to regroup. We're going to be all right. Yeah, no you know, there was, <laughs> nobody there thought that you guys were done and out after that. Absolutely so. not. But but I, I know that it, it was a, a stunned silence in that locker room after that. Oh, we're pissed. Fight. Oh, yeah, yeah. Believe exactly. me, we're pissed. 
Yeah. And the fact that Mike and, and Buddy got in this fight on the sideline because everybody was pointing the finger. I'm like, Mike said, hey, this is my offense. Buddy said, this is my defense. Shut, but, you know, so they fought because we were giving up points that we never give up on defense. Absolutely yeah. not. Yeah. And so Coach Dicker hadn't seen that before. He said, what the hell is going on? And they were being selfish. Those two plays cost us a perfect season. Got it. Figure on third and seventeen, nine times out of ten, you get off the field. Well, you, you take away yeah, those you, two you touchdowns on third and seventeen, field. and a block, and a block punt. Those are the three things that happened in the first half. Yeah, yeah. So, D, yeah, we, like had, said, we had a couple. We had a couple I mean, questions I wanted to ask you on the chat. It's not too. about how you start; it's how you finish. Absolutely. Exactly. We had a couple questions from a guest on the chat too that wanted to ask you. Absolutely. Um, First one was from Dr. Truth. He wanted to know what year was it with the 76 yard touchdown that you had that catch? That was a beaut. Chance, chances are that probably 87 and might have been Detroit. Oh, hey, how about that? We're on right after a Detroit was. game, and it turns out to be yeah. Detroit. <laughs> <laughs> um, one other question. Um, and it's um, he says, as much as I agree with you 100% on Wilbur Marshall should be in the Hall of Fame, what's your take on Steve Mongo McMichael's not being there yet either? Even though technically he kind of is now after the announcement yeah. that they had, yeah, but like even yeah. like both of them, is it like I think what he's trying to say is like, is it they were on such a stacked defense they could not give everybody a Hall of Fame bid? That we'll defense put it this way: be in the, Hall of Fame the, Gi- the, Gi- the New York Giants have more guys on their defense in the Hall than ours, and we were better. Oh, hands there's down. still a lot of hate for eighty-five Bears. Yeah. You know what? I hate when they say that because I look at people, again, no disrespect because <clears throat> they played, they did it. But I look at what Mongo did as a D tackle. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And those that were comparable, Warren Sapp. First ballot Warren. Hall of Famer, Warren Sapp. Of that's why I always say but too. Then I look yep. at the Brian Youngs and the Richard Seymours. They're in the Hall of Fame with less numbers. Yep. And let's be real, Richard Seymour was on some damn pretty good uh, Preachers teams. And, and we had a lot of John Randall, a first ballot Hall of Famer, too, on the defensive tackle side. Wait a minute, John Randall. We, we had a lot of 85. Right, no, no, he was a beast now. I'm too. giving him that. But I'm that saying, they wouldn't yeah. be who they are without Mongo. Absolutely not. It's None uh, of these players would be. It's, it's no, no different. Without the single it's, it's no different than Jay Hilgenberg not being in the Hall. That's crazy, too, right? right? Yeah. So I, you know, I throw a stat out of people all the time. It's seven time All Pro, but more importantly, we're the only team. That led the league in rushing four consecutive years hasn't been duplicated since. And but none of our until Jimbo went in, not one of our linemen in the Hall of Fame. Listen, I, people make, uh, make arguments about Barry Sanders, and I, I'm not going to ever deny Barry Sanders being great. But Walter did everything. Walter threw passes, caught passes, <laughs> ran the ball. Like, come on, man. There's there's no goat if it ain't Walter Payton. That, that, it, it's just no you still, argument. You still remember the, I think, the 176 yards he had from the Wildcat against Green Bay? I remember that. I remember that game. I, I wasn't alive for it. Sweet, sweetness, sweetness, young anyway. sweetness was a unicorn. Straight up yeah, unicorn. Ridiculous. <laughs> well, well, that guy like could have been if he could have had a couple extra years put on. Well, he could have, but the Bears decided not to pay him those last few years. Yeah. Cheap. It's like let, I want to. I want to flip to that. Why the fuck are the Bears so fucking cheap? Why is the organization so damn cheap? I don't get it. They are still. They don't own stadium rights or anything, and they are still a top three profit team in the NFL. But yet they're this fucking cheap. No, you make that much money, yeah. You, you end up being that cheap. Oh, uh, but I, I don't. I don't get it. Oh, I know this. I would say this much, too, going back to the coaching part that you brought up, Frank. It's crazy how. Oh, he's back. A, Ask the question. Um, he's back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. What's, Ask the question, what's, Frank. Did you hear my question? No, say it again. Okay. Um, why is the Bears organization so fucking cheap? <laughs> because they inherited an organization. They didn't earn it. There's a difference. Very true. It's a lot of what, them, what did he pay 50 bucks for the Bears organization, Papa Bear Callis? Was it like fifty dollars? <laughs> was it fifty dollars? Like a hundred dollars or something like that? It was something yeah. like that, man. And now it's you know, a but, but, I, but I think but the Bears realize their fan base is a cult and they had them. It doesn't matter what the product on the field is, they will still be sold out. 
It's so true. And, and that's why they said yeah. when, when our guys' contracts are up, say it doesn't matter what the name on the back of that jersey is. We're still sold out. So why should we put all that money on a guy that we don't really have to pay? He can go somewhere else if we're making our bottom line with just our fan base. He would just be making that money somewhere else, though. That. Yeah, that's how nerds yeah, I mean, in the front office think, and that's what we have mostly all up. But that's my football. But it's not guys in the front office. That's it, not it, winning it, football. It, it's just sad that you had the best collection of guys together at a very young age who could have been dominant for four or five years if you'd have kept us together. But you were trying to figure out a way to not pay, but we just doubled your value on January 26th. Yes. One Super Bowl win, your value doubled. You had a you could have paid everybody. And then you could have went on and kept going too. And won a few I mean, more so, even after that. Man. And so that's the thing that you know that haunts a lot of us is that we had finally the stars had aligned with the right guys. And yep. everybody in the league feared us. That doesn't happen that often. All right, it was a hundred dollars. Hundred dollars. I remember something, <laughs> something just out of the ordinary like that. Yeah, it had to have been something crazy. So he invested a C note, that was it. billion now like yes think think about how much worldwide it's more closer to like 14 billion now if it's worldwide Uh, other than dallas they're still the second most profited team in the world but even to your point earlier that y'all mentioned about the coaching uh aspect of it don't don't touch that yet don't touch that yet i want to ask one more thing okay before because it ties in with this with that ineptitude that we've talked about the nerds, the hedge fund guys, because if Muggsy was alive, they all said that wouldn't have happened. But what do you feel is going to happen now that a football guy is in charge? Kevin Allegedly. Moore. We're hoping. We'll find out. Yeah, we're hoping to give him some. Yeah, he's frozen here. He's not just a face. They'll come back. It's coming. I he think hears everybody's, us, I still, I think. everybody's yeah. waiting on, you know, when Virginia ascends. Okay. When that happens. We, I'm praying that we do get we sell to someone who understands this fan base deserves a lot better than what they've dealt with the last 20 years. Well, take away 2006, 40. it's been a long time, yep. 40. You know, and, and, and I think with that, we are so far behind the times. Everybody's got a new stadium but us, yep. You know, and, and our field is embarrassing, yeah, yeah. You know, so I'm, I'm just sick and tired. Of, we're penny pitching when we're super rich. You know, and we should have a state of the art facility that we do not have, Hopefully and we should we treat a we should we should treat alumni like family, yeah, not just a select few. I've Absolutely. heard that so much too from all of our alumni that we have had have all said that it's just I, like I they treat us okay, yeah. but yeah, that that's ridiculous. That former players just can't casually come up and speak to the current players, give advice, be able to coach them up, mentor them. That, that, that should be given without question. But that's how you, that's called deference. You defer to those who came before you wearing that goddamn uniform. You can't sit up here and disrespect these greats who made it so that you can actually be here doing what you do best. That's disrespectful, man. Well, I'm, I'm probably, about, yeah. I think I'm with me and Jay, probably the two most famous walk-ons in the organization. But I haven't talked to any young players that have come in in the last decade. Wow. So my story is when when oh, making a team was a lot harder and what I had to go through to make the team yeah. and the fact that I did everything that they asked me to do, and I played multiple positions, return, kick, this special team, block better than anybody, did everything, but still doesn't get the credit that I deserve because when I talk about four years consecutive leading the league in rushing, who's your lead blocker? Me. And that's why with with Walter, we became a right-handed running team. Walter would only run towards me. And again, nobody would ever know that unless you watch the film. Yeah. Yeah. And it was harder to watch film back then. It wasn't available. Yeah. It wasn't. Yeah. It was very few and far between. You actually had tape tape, like the the – V- VHS tapes that you had to watch and you had to or be there live. Wine. Be real oh, wine. See, <laughs> that, that goes back to that goes back to what I, I I try to say when it comes to value of of player over production. You got a lot of players that are great players, but they don't do it all. Like there there there's it's like there's a bunch of specialists running around nowadays. Yeah, 
Well, that's what we had. Like I was saying, if I wish somebody could pay me 18 million, if we don't get a first down, I can go sit on a bench and do nothing. <laughs> I was sitting there getting ready to go back and return kicks. Or we go to nickel. I'm in the slot. I'm in motion almost all day trying to figure out help Jim. This is what a man could do. He's be able to crack back on guys. Ask, ask Lawrence Taylor about my about Silky D. He know what's up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> LT man, listen, and that's the funny thing about it. We had a team full of LT, so <laughs> that is but true. Everybody, about it, I think everybody was getting guys. cracked, man, from any we, angle, from any direction. We just had guys who just loved the game and loved to play and loved to hit, and didn't take no crap off nobody. Yeah, let, let me let me ask you this too before, because since you kind of brought it up too before we uh, let you go, because I know you did say it, you're usually in bed by this time. I am, so, <laughs> but like with, and I love hearing this that um, from what I heard, you're from Naperville, right? A suburban? Oh, don't no, no I, I no, I moved out to Naperville. There's a difference. He's okay. a suburb. I'm, I'm, I'm still a brother a from the hood. He's in the suburbs right. now. Right. I, I got a suburb guy by me. I love wow. it. He's how, so do proud of that. That? how do you feel about the Bears going to Arlington Heights? Because that's not too badly far from like. Uh, no, just the fact that they keep changing the uh, the narrative. Now we're going to build in the South parking lot at Soldier Field. Like, oh, okay, how many yeah, teams are put in a bid? I mean, that, at that, end that, of the, you heard that? That doesn't make any sense, right? Because isn't that no, going into McCormick Place? Makes no sense at all. Yeah, right? it's going it's going that direction. And they, they don't seem like it's a lot of space right there to build a stadium. Well, right? Why not just take McCormick Place then? Yeah, just take buy McCormick Place then. McCormick Place can be bought if that, that was the case. The old building is like storage now. So Yeah, I mean yeah, they still use it for like conventions or whatever, but yeah, you got the money to buy the damn place. Just stop being cheap. Yeah, stop being cheap. Right. What, what a shock but, on there. <laughs> but all this time we've been trying to get away from the park district, which we really need to do. And uh, we do have a third airport in Chicago, and that's out in Aurora, where teams actually can fly in and be 15 minutes from a stadium. It's not I mean, way. we just got to look at all the options. Uh, Arlington Heights was a good option until we got a new president. And new president is going to want to do his things his own way. And I know that he wants to set a precedent that he will always be remembered for giving us something that we haven't had since inception in terms of a, a retractable dome stadium where we can actually have a Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It, I think that our fan base deserves that. I deserve this. I, I can tell you this much. Being for fellow Chicagoans ourself, me being from Chicago, it, I take pride in telling people who ain't from Chicago that I've seen every last one of my sports teams win championships in my lifetime. Now I just I'll be forty next year. I was almost two when you guys won the damn. Wow! Show. It's been that long, and it, I, we have been just itching for another title and some more bragging rights to tell people, "Hey, listen, your city may be great, but guess what? We won in every sport in we this won, millennium. We won in every sport." And what I try to tell people all the time, when they talk about greatness, they talk about Muhammad Ali. They talk about Jordan. They talk about Tom Brady. But when they talk about team, they talk about the 85 Bears. Absolutely. Yeah. They and do. I said, so they, they can say what they want to say. We're the most dominant, most talked about, sold more merchandise than anybody, the most famous football team ever. Ever. And that's <laughs> not going to change. No, Absolutely. it won't. No matter where you go, it's not going to change. Yep. How do you feel about the comparison to the uh, the uh, 01 Ravens? You know what? Uh, let, let me let me say this. I, I keep hearing about, hear about Ray Lewis. I keep hearing about Ray Lewis and and Ed Reed. Hey, Ed Reed, you think you can catch a guy who runs four two? No. <laughs> okay, see if you can cover Willie over there. Then everything I'm across the middle, Silky's, nope. Silky's got it. And we and our offensive line was one of the best in the league, and we had Peyton. So your great defense, y'all wouldn't have stopped us. And they did not have. There, there would have been no fear. None. I would. And your offense. Your offense. What they average? Twelve points a game. We'd have destroyed you. Yeah, all right, because they went five games without an offensive touchdown. Like they were inept. On, on, yeah. A, now, now they they gave up the the least amount of points, but that would that could be skewed when you think about 
one, not, and I, I'm not discrediting them in terms of their competition, but also the fact that the, the teams they were playing against didn't have potent offenses or have a potent offensive player like Walter Payton. And their so they offense, going against their offense hadn't seen against. the defense like we had. There was Period. no defensive player who could have ever stopped Walter Payton. I mean, so like I said, I mean, we were a downhill running offense with speed. And our offensive lineman would hit you, get up and hit, go to the next level, hit the next guy until the whistle blew. We had real <laughs> beasts up front, nasty brothers that happened yeah. to be white. <laughs> Just ask <after> them. <laughs> oh. Listen, we, the fact that we, we have the second largest deficit in Super Bowl history, beating a team 49 to 10, 46 to 10. 46 10. 10. That's, 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 that's crazy. The starters did not play the fourth quarter. We yeah, were already out. Worse. We had already took out uh, the Patriots quarterback. He was already hauled off on the stretcher. So, I mean, he, it was no need to play the damn starters. What, what was that? Easton and Grogan, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Grogan, yeah. 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 But like I said, it's just the fact we had the dominance that we needed. And I think everybody who was on the team that year deserved to be on that field and play and enjoy the celebration. And uh, we didn't do it. With just the first team, the second, third team, practice squad guys, everybody contributed to that team getting to the Super Bowl. And they all got a chance to salivate and drink that champagne. That's what it's all about. Well, I hope from your from your from your lips to this current team's ears, uh-huh. we get to bring that glory day back some, some sometime within the near future, man. Uh, they need to listen, they need man. Uh, they, need they, they, they have to listen. They, they to, need to let Kevin Warren, I feel like, just let him do his thing because he is yeah. a football guy. I, I'm concerned you know, about George. If, 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 yeah. anymore. if Virginia so, does the same. One more question. Just yes, sir. Go, I'm not like rushing you. You let us know when you got to go. Yeah. yeah. Currently constructed, not player-wise, but staff-wise. Would you change? Would you make a change? Oh, I clean house. Oh, top to bottom. Like top to bottom. <laughs> Get rid of everybody. <laughs> I, agree with that. Okay, okay. I love it, man. Listen, wow. I'm gonna take it from a former great bear that, <laughs> that said that. I, I have no objections to that. No, I don't. No, that. I mean, it, you know, the only people in this world that are transitioning are transvestites. <laughs> we don't need. We don't need no more transitioning. We need a clean staff. Told <laughs> get rid of everybody. <laughs> JB, I wasn't ready for that one. No, <laughs> hey, I didn't expect that one. Hey, you know what? I was ready, but I wasn't I ready. I was, yeah, right? I, mean, I was not ready for that one. Was I crazy. wasn't ready for that, Frank. Hey, no, man. Smith always going to tell us the truth, man. Whether it hurt our feelings, hurt they feelings, that's what we love about it. I family. appreciate it. I, I love it, though. I always I need it. it. We need to be stop being so damn sensitive in this world. Yeah, man. It's soft. Like, that's one thing I appreciated about Dick Buckers, too, man, because he, he was very unfiltered. Hey, my mom he said you're him. hired. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I would love that. Hey. Oh, no, man. you know, and, and the thing about it, if you're going to bring in coaches, bring in coaches who are used to winning. Stop bringing in these coaches that nobody wants. I agree. You just have nobody, to have a job. even sought after. Yeah. It's like they just pick from the last. They let everyone else pick their picks, and we just pick whoever the fuck we want last. I'm gonna tell you this much. We better not ever. We not. We, we better not ever bring another goddamn person from Green Bay, Wisconsin. I don't oh, give a damn Lord. if it's a player. I don't give a damn if it's a coach. Staff. I don't give a damn if it's if it's, if it's a goddamn towel boy. It better not be anybody wearing green and yellow to ever step foot in Chicago, working for this damn organization ever fucking again. And I mean that shit. I I, I feel your pain, man. That's why I stopped drinking. <laughs> well, they, they got me well, drinking. The, here, the problem is the bear, yeah, like how he said, the, I'm drinking more now that the fucking bears. I'm sitting in my bar in my, in my, in my man cave right now. I'm about to pop a bottle open right now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I know. Listen, I told somebody this earlier that beating, beating Green Bay is the top priority. And mainly because the main, the main thing, the main declaration that Ryan Pose gave at his first press conference is, we're going to take the North and never give it back. Well, God damn it, that consists of beating the damn bastards over there in, in Wisconsin. If you we don't beat them, if we don't beat them, not allowed to go back. Yeah, if we, don't, if we don't beat them, then the improvements that we've made or the strides we've making progressively, it, it don't matter as much because that significant difference only matters when you include beating them bastards over there. We have had this record for a long time, and now 
it's been nine years consecutively we've been, and we've been like, losing we, to them. We that's unacceptable. We have know, to beat them. It's imperative that we do. The one that's thing the most that, important two games in every season. Every the one season. thing about the one thing about this organization and this team that is so blatantly obvious that nobody fears us. No. And, and that's hard, and that's a hard pill for or me to respect swallow. us. Or respect us. Part of the problem is, like Snooky said, you keep bringing in people that do not know how to win. Yeah. Like, I mean, and you, you said it right there, too. It's like, let's just throw out a random person here. When our defensive coordinator got fired midseason, I'm saying he got fired. I don't care what anyone else says. He got yeah, fired okay, midseason. Yeah, he got fired. Damn um, it wasn't even midseason. Like, it was game two. But it was, you literally. It was, it was, it was he, week three. <laughs> yeah, either Flus went out and took control of the defense. Okay, but then you brought in a freaking defensive analyst or whatever the fuck that they call this guy. He's never had Expert. a winning record in his NFL career. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, it's too many of these. Oh, this is my this is my buddy here. Damn that! D- d- what what's his football acumen like? What what is his experience and his resume looking like? I don't give a damn if it, if that's your friend. Because you need to stop hiring all these goddamn friends. All this nepotism is pissing me off. I need you to hire people who know what the hell they're doing, not just because they're your buddies. That's the problem. That's the number one, two, three, four, and five problem in my opinion. You got all these rookies in high powered positions with no veteran leadership. Who do you when when the chips are falling? Yeah. Who do you tap on the shoulder and say, "Hey, man, help"? There's nobody like that because everybody is new. Everybody is new, and the other thing that you can't do is you can't pay guys a fortune from other teams and bring them in here and then make them cap. Can't I do that. Agree. I do agree yeah. with that. I do that agree. that's kind of that's kind of pathetic. You got the job because we paid you. Okay. Yeah. Leadership is about the guys that you can totally rely on. You can count on that been with you through thick and thin. That's, that's what your captain should be. Not yeah. because we just paid him a fortune. Yeah. When I saw that, I'm like, really? You made him captain. We, 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 and I, and I said this earlier in the year. So that, uh, we don't have a true leader on this team that's going to fire the, the, the troops up and get everybody all riled up and hold each other accountable and shit like that. I haven't been seeing enough people on the sidelines when it's a three and out or a turnover or whatever the case may be, just talking to the, to each other. The offensive line talking to each other. The quarterback talking to the, the, the coaching staff. The defense talking to his goddamn uh, – his, his teammates on that sideline too. I haven't been seeing that, and we need to see more of that. Hey, man, pick your fucking head up. I've been seeing too much of this soaking and pouting and putting their head down, sitting on the sidelines. I think we got Tigatron. one. What the hell, man? Pick your damn head up. Where's your heart at? I need to I see y'all cussing each other out or something. I think we got one. Y'all know who it is? I'm starting to see Justin do it a little bit with his with the offensive line. I was like, damn it, that's what I want to see, man. Dude, yeah, what, what are you saying? You got one, are we talking about Hart? Because of what he said and how his, he conducted his interview. I think you have that in Montez Sweat. I agree okay. with that. That's fair enough. But that's, that's one. Fair. That, and that, that was one. a guy they picked but, up. But that, that wasn't a guy that's been here all this time, though, is what I'm saying. So before he that's got here, saying. we had they, nobody. They went and got a guy. That's going to positively, exactly, Trey, like I just said, it's going yeah. to posit- positively affect the culture. See, what people don't understand is, and Silky, speak to this, please. Mm-hmm. Culture is just as important as production. Sweet. Because if you don't, if, if I look like, dude, I don't want to play with this asshole. <laughs> yeah. Then that's when you got all that turmoil. Yeah, yeah but uh, let me let me correct you on that, Montez Sweat. You know he was in the shadow of Chase Young all those years in Washington. Yeah, they played together. He was. For I agree with that. Years. He was. Okay, so all and all they did was lose. So coming here, he has a fresh start. He does. There's no bona fide super. He is your leader. There's no question yeah. about. It. He's your leader on that. By default. <laughs> By default. He, he is the leader. He throws you up there again, Silky. Well, look, he he has been to the playoffs. <laughs> It's true. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's about as much you can say. And that's the measuring stick for the rest of these players on this team. I mean, shit, that's not really high, JB. So it's like just going and then losing in the first round. Uh, that's not much experience. But, I mean, it's experience that we don't have, no less. There we are. There we no, go. You're back. Okay. Yeah. 
That yeah, was a so long like I said, I, I just think that uh, leadership is something you have got to have, and that guy needs to have more mic time um, and real press conferences. I don't need to hear from the coach saying the same stuff. Club Dub yeah. should be closed permanently. <laughs> yes. You beat, a, you, beat a, you beat a bad team. The first thing you want to do is go dance. This ain't Soul Train. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this ain't the Super Bowl trouble either, so I, I see you, man. I, I definitely understand that. What I don't like is the overly celebrating shit that, that Brisker and Eddie Jackson and a few of those I other guys I still do. don't know what the hell this What means. the hell does this mean? I don't know. That's, that's and, because and I, they don't know how to see win. That I get it. But yeah, you give up a damn play the next damn drive, though. I'm just like, they you stopped this one play, but then the next play you gave it up. Yeah. Like, come on, man. Stop doing that. Yeah, Listen, so. I don't have a problem with celebration, but at the same time, it's time and place for it. And, and you have to do the shit in moderation. We're still fucking five and eight. It ain't too much shit to be celebrating right now. Oh, well, I know. And that's why I, I excited just, I, that's why I, I really get on Chicago media as uh, because you keep you keep teeing it up for a layup. You're not critical. We have been awful for a while. Stop making yeah. excuses for bad play, bad yeah. coaching. It is what it is. But I think some of our media is our own kryptonite as well, because they'll sabotage Justin Fields commentary. They'll sabotage what they think we should do in the draft. And it's like, how do you how do you critique Justin fairly and equitably when you got an idiot trying to tell him what to do? Well, I mean, and that's true too. It's a double-edged sword with, with Chicago media to me because they ask a lot of questions that we we as fans want to fucking know. Now I appreciate them for that. But then they, but then they, on the flip side of that, they you do create really? narratives and they, they do start creating all these all this damn friction, additional friction that has nothing to do with any goddamn thing. I'm just like, okay, now y'all just running out of goddamn topics to talk about yeah. now. Like, hey Chicago, on, let me tell you something. Silky go ask the questions we want to know. Yep. No. <laughs> They are he's not going to answer gonna questions. Give us the answers that we want. They are not going to ask the questions we want to know, right? So because they're not going to stir that pot. Yeah. No, my, my I mean everybody is, wants it. Every, yeah. All media in this town wants to have a seat at the table, so they're never yeah. going to get their feet wet. This is what they do. Yeah. You know, now, so but, like I said, I I've been on the other side of that table for years. I know exactly how they work. And that's what I'm saying. Sometimes they're our worst enemy, more so than the team. Sometimes. I, so I the best, the, the best thing yeah. you can do is win and don't talk to them. Ah. But, but my question is, as fans, are we entitled to get the truth out of this team when, when yeah. questions are being yeah. asked of them? Yeah. Or are, are we just like, you know what? Uh, listen, you don't have ball? to tell us all of this, right? So – I, I, I listen. I get into it with Bears fans all the time. About well, they don't have to fucking tell us anything. Well, I don't, I don't completely agree with that shit. No, you got to tell us why the hell you look so goddamn and, and, and inconsistent. I need to know that much. Well, yeah. You got to tell me the well, ins and outs need- of what's going on. Why HR is always being called to fire some goddamn body? But we ain't gonna Damn. get to that. Whatever that personal shit is, I don't care now. It's what on the bridge. I care about the lack of production that we're not seeing consistently. Though you have to answer those questions. Well, I mean, it's just, it's just, I just think the fact that when you are projected to be a certain way and you don't live up those expectations, you hide and you start lying. And you, you might as well be hiding behind mental health because that's your go-to. That's mm. everybody. Yeah, that's true. Good call. Yeah. Good I call. mean, so like I said, you know, be a man. Put your britches on. Stand up. You know, do what you're supposed to do. You know, and um, and like I said, when we when we continue to allow them to get away with BS, it will continue, and we will not be having this issue if our team was winning. But yeah. when we beat Detroit, was it our second division win in two years? Two. Yeah, it's almost three. <laughs> almost three so years. Bad. It was almost three years since we won the damn division game. That's ridiculous. But even to that point. Even give an example about how Flus lied about Lucas Patrick being taken out for uh, who was that Schofield or who was that uh, was that Feeney? And he was that like, was, "Oh yeah, I, I took him out because you know he, he he's played more uh, he's played more snaps in center than, than, than I was like, no the fuck he hasn't. You don't sit there. Listen, you can't piss on my damn shoe and tell me it's raining. Don't lie like that, man. Like really? he wait, he might not really know. 
That's he didn't point. play, but we've seen it though. He did not play more snaps at center than fucking Lucas Patrick did. You gonna say a lot of us like that, like we're <laughs> stupid or something. I was see, like, Luke, what, you full of shit, man. Like, just, don't, don't see, lie, this is, man. This is what happened when you allow yourself to get emotionally invested. I I remove that emotion out of my life so it doesn't bother me anymore. <laughs> well, I'm trying. Yeah, well, I'm working on that. Obviously, listen, I've been I'm not working much on so it. realistic less and less optimistic about this team. So every week that I'm looking at the, the next opponent, I'm like, uh, listen, I've been burned before. They 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 told me they uh we can it's a winnable game. We can do this and do that, and then we turn around and look like shit. Now now I'm disappointed again. So now my level of disappointment ain't as, ain't as high as it once was because I'm not well, expecting it, it, a whole lot so from this, this team. This is what I tell Bear fans. Stop counting wins that you haven't even played yet. Absolutely. You're supposed to go week oh, to week. 100%. Stop looking ahead to week the next three or four games. Oh, if we do this, you got to win Sunday. If you don't win Sunday, season's over, period. That's true. That's true. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm Just, don't you, get it twisted. Yeah, I'm, I'm worried about Miles Garrett. I don't think he's fucking human. I think somebody needs to make him pee in a cup because I think he's made out of like vibranium. Cyborg. I don't know what he is, but he cannot, you cannot be that tall and that damn big and that ferocious on that line like he is. I am worried that Braxton Jones and Darnell Wright is going to get killed trying to prevent Justin from getting killed. Yeah, Cole get Justin not going to see a lot of passes in this game. Well, I, am, I, I, I am so I, worried about him. I, I, I just. I, I, but I guarantee you, every team that plays the Bears, their defensive coordinator said, you know, I'm tired of seeing every highlight Justin gets outside the pocket. All these missed tackles. You know, and when it's third and 17, they should not convert. You know, and it's a situation where we're going to have to be more creative in our passing game because they're going to take away the run. I can tell you that they're going to take it away. Mm -hmm. Justin going to have to put some numbers up this weekend in terms of throwing that ball. Yeah, I, I don't see I don't see this being a winnable game because because Cleveland's defense is the best, you know, in yards given up per game. They so, that I mean, they are that. Oh like, man, I, I am, it's going to be a low scoring game. I'm going to think it, it, it will be because the offense ain't, ain't ain't very potent. They they missing they they, they quarterback and their best I, running no, back no, and no, one of the best no, running backs no, in the league. No, I'm not going to let you do that. They just put up 30 points and 300 yards and three touchdowns with Joe Flacco. So I ain't gonna let you do that. That's true. Well, true, but I mean, I, I mean, I think, this, this, listen, when I'm you're, not concerned when about our defense against their offense, though. Their, their offense ain't gonna be doing that shit against our defense. I'm you're concerned about against... our offense and our play calling against that goddamn defense. I don't yeah, trust but... Luke Getzey against this damn defense. No, Hell I don't know. Oh, I don't somebody's either, gonna because... die, JB. Somebody. Yeah, the killed. thing is, like, when you're going up against somebody like Miles Garrett and you don't run simple Madden 2021 freaking plays, all right. That's how you're gonna try to prevent Miles Garrett from getting to you. But they don't call those. The guy Maybe. has called yeah. six screen passes all year. Six screen passes all fucking year. Two of them were to Valus Jones. Like, what the fuck are we doing? JB, I am predicting that he's gonna run 12 squ- uh, screen passes in this game. 12. He he's gonna call this shit. We're, we're looking at another passing chart like this, is what you're yep. saying. Yeah, pro- possibly a little less uh, less yardage because well, we're probably seeing a three to two. Cleveland's win. defense is really good with three tackling. Mm-hmm. They're really good at tackling, and they're really good yeah. at, at stopping the yak yardage from. How about they're yardage. just good? Period. Yeah, they are, and they have some pretty they, solid. You know, pretty they, solid uh, they got, they got, so. they got athletes on that defense. But like I said, Justin uh, is going to have. They're going. We're going to have to do a lot more play action this year, this week. We really do. Oh, some butts about yes, it, but we don't establish a run, and all they their defense is doing is coming after Justin. It's going to be a long day. Cleveland is one of the only teams in the league that can get pressure and sacks on a quarterback with just their front four. They got to send the house to you to get you. Yeah, like that's, that's what I am afraid of. I am so concerned for Justin's life in this game because the very second he hold on to that goddamn ball, a half second too long, he gonna get cremated. Miles well, Garrett, it's not to be fucked around with, man. I well, listen. I, but it, man, but see, I am so concerned. Thing, Jones. It ain't just Miles Garrett. No, it's, it's not. No, just they got a stack. It's Darius Smith. But, 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 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They just all over the place. They, oh, yeah. 
All right, Dennis. It'll, it'll we're, be all we're, right, we're gonna, guys. It'll be all right. We, yeah, we will we're, we're show gonna, up. We're going to let you go here, Dennis, because we don't want to keep you on too late, man. Oh, no. Um, I got to uh... – I want to get you on for the draft predictions. Oh, absolutely, man. Well, can we get you back like once it's more closer to the draft? Because yeah, I mean, we you know there there's a lot of guys that you were we were looking to get that we really don't want. They're gonna be around <laughs> high on the board. Me, all right, now now that you went there, we have to start. We have to go there before we let you go. All right, <laughs> we're pretty much guaranteed. I'm saying pretty much guaranteed the number one pick because Carolina is freaking god awful, and we have yeah. their pick. Like we don't we don't want another quarterback in North Carolina. Who are you well, taking? Well, it won't be sure hell don't. We don't want no Thank quarterback you. in North Carolina. And get we this, don't. Drake, man, he's only a sophomore. He ain't ready for the damn league. No, but are I, you I, taking really a quarterback at number one? Hell no. Thank you. All right, thank hell you. Hell no. Who who are you taking at number one, or are you trading back to get more assets? I would trade back. Even trade if back. Marvin Harrison Jr. Like comes Marvin out, you look for another dynamic wide receiver. To go okay, along with DJ me, Moore. Okay, let me let me let me correct you guys rather quickly. All okay. these great receivers coming out of college, they're in an offense where they were in the, the quarterback was in the shotgun. They were probably averaging 40, 45 points a game, right? Yeah. Almost every ball they caught, they were 10 yards in front or behind the defensive back. They they never really faced a whole lot of man coverage. Right. We always get you frozen right when you're smiling. It's crazy. You must smile a lot. <laughs> Listen, I mean, Ohio State does play a pro style offense. They do, so, but I mean, the thing is, with Marvin Harrison, when Marvin Harrison Jr. he runs a four three, he he's does. listed as a phenomenal route runner with excellent hands who never he drops does. passes. He don't. So he does kind of got that whole chain that we're hoping. The problem that you have, when I try to tell people all the time. I don't give a damn what your skill is. If you ain't got no offensive line, it won't matter. Hunter, I agree with that. That's very true. You better get – we need some goddamn horses up front. We do. That's what we need. We need a center. We don't, yeah. I don't want nobody who played no, center in high school, to, played no, some in college, but they really get tackled. I, I need people who specialize in a, in a particular area of where we need them to line up at. I need yeah. a center, a pure well, Mr. Chicago, let's center. not forget, too, the best available center out there right now is going to go in the second round, and we traded for Montez Sweat, our second-round pick. So well, we yeah. aren't getting him unless yeah. we're trading back. Well, and I think one of those picks that we got in the first round, we will trade back, and we will Wait, eventually do, get like do a Did we get your lot of second-round pick this year, or that's next year? That's, that's next, next year. year. Next year. year. That is yeah, next year's year. second-round pick. So. Yep. Yeah, right. so like well, I said, it, it's – they're um, – yeah, the draft is is top heavy on quarterbacks, but they they come from systems where it's wide open offense. I agree. Yeah, it's okay tough. when it, when 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 everything changes. Pro style, yeah. And uh, and you got guys in your face. You ain't got all day to throw. You ain't the same. I agree. You know, and I and I just try to tell people, said, man, let me tell you what in the in the National Football League, there are some real thumping brothers coming. Yeah. You know, in college, you you can stand back there and order this level. That's true. Very true. So, like I said, it's just a matter of we need depth. We need offensive linemen. And can you find me a safety that can cover somebody? Yeah. <laughs> I know parents would love to hear that one. Right? We love we got, him, we got, we Eddie him. Jackson needs to go. We Oh, yeah. There's a lot of and, people and, on the chat. And, and, and take his and take his hero with him. Getting his entrance back in with that one. Yes. Yeah. He, he yes. Did, man. He, he let me hey. down. Well, day. you know what? Terry, Terry's look like Flip Wilson. What's going on, man? Oh no. <laughs> I, saw, I saw the getting <laughs> hot. Flip Wilson. Something, man. I, I had to take off all the clothes, man. man. I had to go make a cup of tea. Yeah, he went from Geraldine to Flip Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> but some Theraflu in that in that team, man. It's going it's gonna definitely help. Yeah, man. You need to feel better. Woo, man. You look bad. Yeah, he does. Thanks, he does. man. I appreciate you like that. Shit. <laughs> you look like shit. The just to, I'm just in here and pray for you, man. I'm gonna pray for you. It'll be all right. <laughs> My man. I appreciate all right, man. It was it man. was great having you on though, Silk. And when you're in <laughs> Naperville, sure. man. Look me up, dude. I'm in Wheaton, not that far. Oh, you're in Wheaton? You're on Roosevelt Road? I am. How the hell did you know that? 
Hey man, you know, I have, I have eyes right off of Rosie Road. 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 <laughs> right off of Rosie Road, man. We we net that big, so I mean it's pretty good. So <laughs> don't be hating on my Wheaton. <laughs> <laughs> you had like that shit oh, big as hell. How you know? Right, right. That was crazy because I am right out of Roosevelt. Yeah, yeah, man, but I, what, I, what I say to this is that um, we have to finish strong no matter what. And uh, sometime when you nobody thinks you can win, that's when you play your best game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that is true. And listen, I appreciate your candor and transparency, sir. I definitely appreciate the, the, the contribution you made to, oh, to, to, that, to the greatest Super Bowl team that was ever assembled. Yeah, I just wish no we would have got at least two or three more out no of them. About so that. when you when you watch the Avengers and Captain Mary said Avengers assembled, that's us. Yeah, yeah Bears assembled. Yeah, yep. yeah that, that, that's facts right there, man. Love it, love it, love right, it. Man, it was it was great having you on though, man. We'll God bless my brother and uh, we'll somewhere. be in touch for sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Peace out. All, All right, right, homie. I'll talk to you. Bear down, man. I love yeah, it. that's. That's my main uh, man, Silk. Keeping it had, real. Love it, man. I had to it. try to make a comeback so I could holler at him real quick. But uh, I talked to him um, this morning, and he had a lot to say. So I was like, man, you know what? Just come on to the podcast. Yeah, he's welcome <laughs> anytime he wants to. Yeah, come man. Home. Listen, he, he, that, that, that trans joke, I wasn't ready for that joke. I, I didn't even <laughs> see that. <laughs> he threw everyone I didn't off. see that one coming, man. That was a good one. Yeah, he threw everyone off of that. But but T, I know he gained some favor uh, with you because he said Eddie Jackson needed to go. Yeah, I knew it. I, I saw it. <laughs> yeah, uh, 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 I think he, he could uh, wait to clap for that one. Though. Who does yeah, he yeah. said Eddie Jackson? Terrence picture popped up on the bottom. I was like, I knew that was coming. Knew that was listen, coming. Listen, I, I had listen, th- listen to 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 my own defense. I had high <laughs> hopes for E. Jack, man. Coming to the season, I thought that obviously that foot had, had fully healed. And he was going to be back to his old self to a certain degree. And then he, he just let me down all this shit. He ain't gave me no goddamn turnovers, man. He ain't forced for one. Does anybody know exactly what draft position we have after the first round? I know we don't currently have a second. but do we, we, have third, we, have, we have two third rounds. We have, we have two, two thirds. thirds. We have two yeah. thirds. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I want you all, and I'm just saying it because, again, I am the nerd that just does that. I would love in the third round – for them to get Kalen Bullock out of USC, a six foot three, 40 inch vertical type kid at safety. All he does is high point the ball and get it and got good defensive ball skills because that's the type of person that we need in this cover, too. Yeah, we, we need Kalen a big guy. Look him up. It's, it's another safety that I did like. I think the kid was from Florida State or um, Florida State. No, was it Florida State? Or was it Miami? The top, you know, the top D, de- and this is this, this don't laugh, but the top defensive back in the nation right now is Kool Aid from Alabama. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He's pretty good, man. I mean, oh, he's damn good, but we yeah. don't need that position. No, we don't. We put we put uh, for the horse. Dude from Minnesota's hey, pretty big, good. Um, in speaking the of that, game. we didn't even we didn't even get the highlights. Do we want to get the highlights and start? Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, let's get the highlights of the game. Yeah. I'll yes, get sir. it to you. Don't worry about it. I don't want you seeing doubles with all that Mucinex that you're drinking over there. All right. Here we go. Lions are going to bring an extra man. Fields climbing the pocket. And there's that athleticism from Justin Fields. In- sure nice one by Foreman. He's got the first down. And he- Fields keeps it. Plenty of space. Justin Fields, the first down. DJ Moore has only run the ball one time this year. He's going to fake it to Fields and run it for a second time this year, and he's into the end zone. Contested catches in the NFL this year. Bears bring a blitz, and they get to Goff. It's Yannick Ngakwe. Hutchinson at the bottom against Darnell Wright. Fields somehow escapes, still on his feet. Justin Fields making some magic happen. Fields loads up. Oh, wow. I don't know how that ball got into Darnell Mooney. To the third side and create that pressure. Cairo Santos was the special team's pen. And Goff is picked up by Jalen Johnson. 
Big to Herbert. Fields finds a man. It's Cole Komet with plenty of space, and they get out from their own position. Fields stepping up, delivering down the middle for Darnell Mooney. Second down at six. Fields, quick shot underneath, and it's a first down for Bayless Jones. Lions with an extra man. Fields looking up top for DJ Moore. He's got it. Pressure coming from the Lions. Fields with time, gets rid of it, and it's caught by the rookie Tyler Scott. Well, that's been the story for the Bears too often this year, settling. Goff stepping up, low throw incomplete. Fields, tough throw. And he got the jump. It's a free play. Fields for more. Got him. Touchdown. Bears lead. Oh, a fumble on the snap. Loose on the deck. 64 today. Fields. Floating it for Foreman with a nice over-the-shoulder catch. Fields rolling out. Justin Fields. His eyes are on the end zone. He's in. Touch. Sorry. Third and six. Pressure coming. Fields gets rid of it. And DJ Moore. Make it to Foreman. Fields loads it up. And somehow DJ Moore. Santos. Off under pressure and he's wrapped up and brought down. It is Jervon Dexter Sr. It is the first NFL sack for the rookie out of Florida. Today. Goff under pressure. Down he goes again. Back about 20 yards away or more. Goff hit as he delivers into the arms of Edmonds. <laughs> Look at the relief. Yes. Look at the relief on that man's face. First time winning back-to-back -back games. Is the hold, the kick, the win for the Giants. Okay, so I didn't understand that last part. Because the Packers lost, dude. Absolutely. Okay. Well, the Packers lost. The Giants won. So the Giants moved out The first out thing, the first thing I want to say is, does the Adam on me make you just want to watch the football game? Dude, he is awesome. He, he, he does. So I mean, he was just yelling and screaming the whole time. <laughs> He's super excitable. Every sport. So everybody does. in the chat, if you want to go see our interview, Adam on me, nice. go to YouTube, subscribe first. Then check it out, and then all the other interviews we did with a lot of other people too. Yeah, shameless plug. Hey, all right, go ahead. I, just, just, I, real, real quick, I just want to say something yeah, yeah. in regards to these highlights, particularly talking about Justin. Justin is terrible for my blood pressure. He scares the living shit out of me in certain situations that he gets himself in, but he somehow gets himself out of shit. I'm like, oh my god, I can't watch this shit. I was almost certain we was about we about to get a goddamn safety. He got yes. out of that shit. I, don't know I said, Justin, when, out, when I see Justin in person, I will shake his hand. I say, son, you scared the fuck out of me. I need you to stop mm -hmm. doing my blood pressure like that. I need you to stop putting yourself in situations that you ultimately get yourself out of eight out of ten times. I won't say. Well, he didn't put himself in that situation. Ten. No, I mean, no, you would no, say no, the no. offensive line put him in that. No, I'm saying holding the ball too long in some of the situations he do. Some and of them. I'm just like, a I need him to stop doing that shit because he I scared agree. me and so I'm, much. I'm like, he's about to get killed. Just, we about to fumble. Something's about to happen. I've always told y'all this. Every time something great is happening with this team, something real fucked up is on the horizon shortly after that. And, it, and it's been pretty consistent this year. But I'm a, I'm a that last back, game. I'm going to on that. I'm yeah. going to get back to you on that because one of the things is with that play call that was made in the end zone, what Justin did, like that was just utterly phenomenal. That was like awesome Randall Cunningham against Buffalo type shit, like back in the day. That was just awesome. But what I wanted to bring up with that is Justin did not seem rushed and he did not seem rattled this game. He had a poise about himself he where did. that's what we're looking for. Whereas you put a Caleb Williams, a Drake man, or a Nick, and he took off. They're getting but I'm killed. Saying, but if you put those in that same situation, they're getting killed. 
they're gonna they're gonna fold. Yeah, and that's just the truth. I agree with that. Now, what I want to say on the flip side, on some funny stuff, that bonus coverage. Yes. <laughs> is that not what they said in, com in coming to America? That's exactly yes, what they said. Yes, That's exactly what yes. they said. The, the exact Giants thing. New York, the the Packers of, the Packers of New York Bay. beat the Packers of Green yeah. Bay. The By Packers, kicking an oblong ball. In the, ball in the name of the, pa the Giants oh, triumph, yeah. they kicked a large, rounded pigskin through a big H. It was the most successful. The big H. And, they, and they ran victorious. Did you did you upload that? To, I did uh, upload that. I didn't oh, put did that on here. Oh, yeah. I didn't upload it on here. Oh, that was hilarious. Other ones. <coughs> I wish now, I that's what brings more joy. That what? brings more joy, joy than, than us winning the game, same day the Bastards lose the game. Oh, yeah. nothing more joy than that. Hey, we didn't dig too deep into the game because love. And one so quick thing though with the comments, we had this one pop up, and this was something I uploaded. <laughs> Because I did upload that one when I saw that it. That is fucking well. hilarious. I'm like, out, I don't even like, remember that. He bagged the shit out yeah. of him. It was on the sideline. Obviously, it was, it was one of the run plays, and then he just yeah. obviously fell on him. But I, I forgot about that until somebody posted that. That's picture. one of those, oh, my. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, That's uh, a pause dude, moment on that one. If you don't get, if you don't get, this, if you don't get the fuck off me, I'm going to – neither one of us will be playing the rest of this goddamn game. Yeah. <laughs> I love that nasty with Teddy like, Jenkins. But this thing, like, who who wants to start off breaking down this game? But I, I just before we even break down the game, right, game ahead, I wanted to bring one thing to light that a couple of us have talked about throughout the season. Justin, we know had twelve carries, right? Cool. Not mad at that because a lot of them were based on scrambles. Mm -hmm. Do you know that the next the Dante Foreman, Deontay Foreman had eleven. Khalil Herbert only had three. Do you see this? Time is not mad at that. But yeah, yeah. Her, her, Herbert ain't. Her, oh, Herbert ain't. Uh, he ain't been right since that injury. He's not seeing that. He, I agree. I agree. His 100%. time is limited. Like, his and, time is limited. And did you notice? Did you notice how many great pickup blocks Roshan Johnson had? It's in the highlights too. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. She is that that, that yeah, the yeah, DJ yeah. Moore touchdown. Roshan Johnson had a great ass block. <laughs> That opened up the pathway for you. That was against Hutchinson, too. Yeah, that I was mean, against fucking Hutchinson. Big ass. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I, again, I don't have any angst. Because, because well, one thing is, hell, aren't all three of them just in? No. I think all four of them. Aren't they all? Well, before this game, weren't they all averaging, like, over four yards of carry? Yeah, close like to. Yeah, At least yeah, close to. Yeah, yeah, about close to. Like, so we were, we were the number three rushing attack in the league, I know. But just looking at, 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 at what that was yesterday, like I need Roshan to get a couple more carries. He only remember guys, he only had one. Only had one. Yeah. Like yeah. Lou Gessy is not you, he's not utilizing these goddamn players to their best skill set. And then on top of that, I don't like the fact that we have a fucking fullback that we're not using, except in the blocking game. Bless the game can can we show once I run it, yeah, we down there, watch the game. Let's yeah, see was actually pretty catch. productive yeah. in that game, running the ball. Give but remember, he had the minus catch. They yeah, used him in the, the passing game. game. He had the minus it's catch. That, that was a stupid play, though. Game. That was a dumbass play. You had him like, lined up like a goddamn receiver. Like, yeah. come on, man. And, and, and this know what he's doing with this team, man. When it comes down to blasting game, you need to realize who you're fucking going up against next week. And that front four that you're fucking going up against next week. Let me tell you something. You need to use blasting game more for this game. Listen. And ain't, ain't no chip shit gonna work on this fucking front four no. we about to go against. You no. need to be doubling them every single down. Not a chip block. Miles Garrett eat that shit a lot, but that's nothing to him. I need us to be doubling because guess what? He's gonna line up as the interior. He's gonna line up on both outside to to match up against Braxton Jones and against Darnell. When he say Darnell right, oh, he's gonna eat Darnell right alive, man. Because oh, he, 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 he gonna be all over the place. He gonna Will. be all over and Luke Getzi ain't gonna know what the fuck to do because he ain't gonna know where the fuck he is, or he's gonna forget I, where I the fuck one, he's going. But I got I got one problem with what's going on, right? And I'm tired of seeing blasting game lined up in the passing game like he's Larry Sanders. Remember, Larry Sanders the only fullback to have 100 catches in the season. Damn near did it twice, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody check my math. This ain't Larry Sanders, man. No. Like, stop flaring him out. Like, let him do what he does best. Maul somebody. 
On fourth and one, if you're going to do the tush push, let him do the pushing. On fourth and short, let him be the bell cow and let him, you, hey, put him in and put Foreman in and get some tough yardage. Like, let a let him be a fullback. No more cute shit, JB, on fucking third and one. No more cute shit, man. Yeah, well, come on, DJ man. Moore. It was four one yard. Four for one. Four for one. Four for one. Four for one. one look, you, you throwing little pass. Look, 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 okay, why why, on why four are you one. pitching the ball on fourth and one? He Can we lost not be like Philly really and you, do the damn you have a fucking shit. Just push his ass up front. Just. My my strength against your strength. We going forward, goddammit. Your ass is going backwards. Toughen up. None of that cute shit, man. Jesus and that's why Christ. I say Getsy still. And, and, and I have to give credit where credit due because I'm not that much of a jerk. He called a good – not in the first half. In the first half, I was kind of like, hey, man, what, what, what's going on here? He, but he picked it up because 33 pass attempts – I did not expect coming. I didn't, but I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. I'll take it. I, like, this is I, thing. I can't is, give him that much credit, man. I, since we're, not, since, since we're giving. flipping it into the game right now, and I will say this, like I wasn't mad about what Getsy did on offense, but I did not like his game plan in the red zone. We, I felt like we yep. did not have any success in the red well, zone. We Other than the one here. where Justin Fields Again. scrambled, Again. he saw the vision, saw the lane, and scrambled yep. it. I did not like the red zone play calls. And that I fourth and that. one really pissed me the fuck we, off. We settled I mean, for field goals unnecessarily, in my opinion, because of the, the bad play calling on third down. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. When you uh, – and, and, and Silky said it too, where the tight end screen is, but it's like if Komet is this six foot six, 250-pound kid, use him. Listen, he was one-on-one -on -one in the end zone, one of them drives. Make his ass make a play. It, this, this little motherfucker can't hold him. You make his nope. ass make a play on that. On that on, and, and that's what I'm saying. Like, play, man, come on. If that was Gronk, Tom Brady was throwing to him. Man, he he's down. Man. Whether the coach Kelsey, didn't throw him to or not, he would have threw that fucking ball. If that was Jim, listen, if that was Jimmy Graham. Remember Jimmy Graham a couple years ago led us in fucking touchdowns. With he was up against a five foot eleven fucking corner covering. He was him boxing him, him boxing these little bastards off. out. Just catching the damn ball. It's if Clement drops that ball, him. it's on him. It's not on Justin. I agree. It's like, come and on, man. <laughs> we, we left 17 to 21 points out there on that fucking field. Easy. And that's why I, I say that's that shit. the obvious stuff that he does. Because if you watch, and I, I challenge each of us to watch the first series and the second series, whether we, you know, go three and out score or whatever, just watch. They seem more confident in the first 10 to 15 scripted plays than he does adjusting on the fly. Just, just Absolutely. He, he, he don't do well on the fly at all. No. When just, just no. improv and shit, coming up with shit, he come up with some stupid shit. As soon as we do something right, now he want to get cute and shit, do something dumb. I'm like, okay, here he go with that dumb shit again. Here he go. It's a screen. Here come the jet sweep. It's like this motherfucker don't know nothing else except screens and jet sweeps. And look in the highlights how many dynamic plays were 15 to 20 yards. Oh man, just 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 let them cook, man. Let let these players work. They they do this. You ain't never done this shit before, Getsy. See, and they you probably won't around. ever get another goddamn chance to do it again because they you didn't deserve it in the first damn place. But see, that's the thing. They're gonna mess around, and let's just say, and I I'm, I don't think they will because if they lose the next game, they're mathematically eliminated, probably, most likely. But that six to seven wins that we were talking about. Early on in the season, it's possible. It is it's possible. The Arizona game, for sure. <laughs> Listen, Bless I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm be real with you. I, I said this shit too. I got flack for this. These other fucking games don't matter to me. That last fucking game does. That last and game. No, no, no. Well, I think Bay. the Arizona game yeah. is the last game. That well, I mean, the we Arizona better game, fucking win. I, I don't game. know if I want to win. <laughs> no, no, win? fuck that. No, it's still we better fucking win that game. No, the Arizona. I, I said the Arizona game matters. Like it really does matter. I know Arizona game. No, I, listen, I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna put the cart before the horse, but I will say that's a winnable game. We bet not fucking lose in Green Bay. We bet not fucking lose that game. If, if we win, if we lose all the other game, I'll be pissed. But I wouldn't be as pissed as I would us losing that game. We bet not fucking lose that game. So that, let's say that game. And I made a joke about this. That's a fireball offense. You ought to get fired because you can't beat Green Bay. Fuck that. Now, you don't deserve to be here. Now, wait a minute. In all, in, all, in all fairness, 
Let's we, say that and, is the last game. And that gets us to his six wins. He doubles the total. Are you keeping him? Oh. Thank you, Ma. I am not keeping Getsy no matter what. I want no, that no, no, no. out no, there no, right no. now. Getsy, Getsy walking no matter home. what, I want him gone. Getsy can pack his shit. His shit should already be packed right now. Like, he should be ready for the Uber that's going to get called for. Like, instantly. But Floos, oh, I, again, I asked the question. Maybe it happened during the, before the merger, but keep Floos as the defensive coordinator. Like, I I you like the fact that t- – listen, you, I like the fact that, that these players not, are it's advocating it's not for him. You do realize it's that's not an option, right? I, I, it's I, not, I, I, mean, I did it. I, I did it. Flus, Flus can say he will take take a step down. I don't know if that's allowed, but I don't know any what? other coach wait, 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 wait. What? Done that. Can, can he? Uh, well, I don't know what Hold up. 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 Stop pausing people. Flu said what? No, he said he can say. He didn't say he can No, said. I'm saying he can oh, I say. I thought you said. No, I'm saying he, he can said. say that he no, can no, take no. a step down. But no coach has ever freaking done that. Ever. Like, that's okay. No. Like, I mean, listen, yeah, I, mean, I like the fact that this team has been advocating for him and saying, they are. They're playing saying hard that hard. he's been keeping the team together even when it didn't look as promising as, as, it, as, as it did. So I'm willing to give him a try. I'm not willing to give none of his fucking buddies. Uh, a, a I don't give a shit about his buddies. No, no, I'm saying all the masses he put on his coaches. They gotta here. go. They gotta go. They got to go. This, this is the go. thing, and I actually, I actually have a nice little stat. This defense this playing that well, I to show everybody. But great, I want, I want to yeah, say like, like the fuck out of here. Either <laughs> let's, let's, better we play can, well without. We can say our defense has gotten better with the Bruce coaching. They have. We can't dismiss that. But are we, gonna, rid of them. are we going to give that credit to Everflus, or are we going to give that credit to Poles Bill for making Snow. the trade for this guy? Listen, I told people before that this, this trade was a, a move for desperation to keep to save both Poles and Flus's job. Yes, and but look at those stats. He's made an, he, he's made such a significant impact on his goddamn defense. You can't dismiss this shit, man. Like I, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not going to dismiss. Or not give credit to Flus for this defense playing a hell of a lot better. We get more pressure. We get more turnovers. And uh, but B, we're getting the turnovers because of this guy putting pressure and, and because on of the court. fact that um, and because of the fact that now players are in the positions to make plays better than they did early on. But again, I, I'm looking back on I counted six goddamn t- uh, games this year that we let get away from us. The Green Bay game we should have won. The Broncos game, we should have won. We should have beat Minnesota ass both times. We should have beat Detroit ass both times. That's six games that we should have won. Well, we we should be winning game. right now. Huh? Don't forget the Denver game. All right. I, I, I already said the Broncos. Yeah, right. yeah. I, I said that already. So that, that's, that's six. We should have won these games. And these were oh, games. Oh, shit. I'm on the show. Had. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, Easy? We, these are games that we I got in our it. own fucking ways and lost. These were winnable games that we should have won. The bucket did gain shit. You want to add that one? That's a seven. No, wait, game. Are, Mr. Chicago, are you, so you're saying Tampa Bay, we should have won. Uh, Denver, absolutely. Detroit, absolutely. Uh, the first Minnesota, Minnesota game, too. yeah, I think we should have won that. Both Minnesota games, both Detroit games should have been both wins. Okay, and but. The, and the who, first okay, Green Bay game. Who are those, had the most who are those were wins? For that Green Bay so we're game talking, about, we're like talking about three or four games. We're talking about three or four games. I'm talking about six games. Well, no, because two two of the six were wins. Well, but I'm saying, but the other two were losses. So it's like if you add those four up, both Minnesota, yeah, both Detroit, that's four wins. Detroit, Minnesota, Denver, and uh, and Tampa Green Bay. Bay. No, and Green Bay. Oh, and we Green Bay. Well, Green game. Bay, they kicked our ass. Like that no, was fuck terrible. that. They they shouldn't have. They they, they not should, good. No, you're absolutely right. But they they like shit. Hit. Like that wasn't even close. That wasn't even like a like. It was like lack was, of preparation, was, though. They had the most time that they would athlete. ever have to prepare for a game this season was week one, and that's what the fuck they put out there on the goddamn field. I, I yeah, can't they were that. bad. They were bad at that point. But we now, better, that's, that's why I said we we better not lose this last game. That, that, that this is not this is not up for discussion. We better no, not I'm lose these with bastards. You. I don't care game. about draft position at that point. Beat Green Bay. Beat Green Bay at all costs. I don't, care. Point I don't care either. Is this we're giving Eberflus too much credit on what he did turning around the defense 
as opposed to giving Montez Sweat the credit because of what he brought to the defense. Because Eberflus didn't change his defense. Let me, let me show you a, that again, J.B. Yeah. Let's just show that to you again there. Yeah, but – that, that, But, but that, I, I agree. agree. I we agree always with knew. Eberflus we always that. knew that this defense was dependent on being able to get pressure with your front four. We didn't have guys for that. Now, no. now that they have the guy for it, they're able to do it. So I think, you know, obviously Sweat deserves the credit. He's the player. But at the same time, don't you also got to hand it to the coach for, you know, putting him in situations. Guys in situations. No, no, because when he first got there, he was talking about, oh, we all have to rotate. He's got to get the speed. Then somebody made no, a call and said, my fucking hey, ass. fool, we paying him $98 million. Play yeah. Yeah, this, he better, he better fucking long play. Long he long better long play, long play long every long critical long. down. Every critical like down, that. his ass better he be on that timely field. Blitzes. Hell no. Yeah. When Reggie White went to Green Bay, you think they said, hey, man, we need you to play every two downs and sit five down. Hell no. Get in there and do what you do. Like, 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 like stop giving corn. people a fucking right. participation trophy pass. No, no, I'm with you on that, JB. I'm with you on that. Like, like, stop doing that. What, and, what and I don't like, like though, that, that the game, game, like JB, he spelled himself great. out. I don't like that shit. Don't don't do that again. Don't, I don't, don't like that. Don't do, that. Don't don't do it again. again. Thank you. Don't do it again. Wait, That's what did it. they do? Cook himself out of the game? Yeah. yeah, I'm putting your ass right back in there. I'm putting you right back in. What yeah. are you doing? No, no, no. We we need you out there to fucking wreak a goddamn havoc and okay. help us get a goddamn turnover, win this fucking game. Hey, man. We should have won that game. Come on. Yeah. Come on. But this this is one thing I will say, regardless of it being Montez, I'm, I'm going to say sweat. I, I should say sweet because I kind of made that a trademark on the show. No, you should. Um, Give me a sweat. Sweat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sweat. But regardless whether it's either one of those two, we could even say, you know, with our secondary finally healthy now, like our linebacking core seems to kind of fit the system a little bit nicer. Are, I'm, am I the only one watching the defense feeling like this? Yeah, yeah, you are. I, I feel better about the defense right now. There's no I, I question. Do, about it. No, I, thing, I do too. Here's the thing that I don't feel good about. I don't feel good about waste, waste, wasteless and wasteful ass turnovers that don't equal no goddamn. Point. What the fuck was that, Frank? Go to bed. <laughs> Go to bed. <laughs> I, just, I, I don't appreciate the fact that we're wasting our turnovers by getting no fucking points on the offensive side of things. The damn defense, give y'all the damn ball back. What the fuck do you do with it? I told you the one stat that you will never see come on the stat sheet is the amount of goddamn points you didn't score. You didn't That score we had yet. opportunities to score. Wait a minute. We had too many know. opportunities in that game. And in, in, in most of the games that we've gotten turnovers that we didn't fucking get no fucking points out of. Or we got fucking field goals. I love Santos. He money. But I need touchdowns, man. I don't what trust our red zone play calls. Goals. They came back and beat us. <laughs> yeah. Go get some points. I need touchdowns, man. I need you to be, keep your goddamn foot on that gas pedal and, and, and keep going a buck right, okay, no, Until the goddamn gas We're not going to get a touchdown every time. You're not, we're not going to get touchdowns every time. We, we got to get points. Well, then we're not going to be a Then what the hell are we doing here? Like, I'm just saying, you have, you have to be practical, too. Like, you, you, you can't. Practical? Yes, easy, practical. Easy, easy. In, in the damn red is, zone, oh, man, this ain't why, why can't we not have a, a greater yeah. red zone per, a touchdown percentage? Where is I see other goddamn teams that know how to score in the goddamn red zone. Oh no, the yeah. let, let me tell you this: if we're if we're gonna go into that and we're gonna talk about red zone, I mean, obviously, I want touchdowns. I understand where Easy's going with. We're not gonna always get it, but you're still gonna call play calling that's gonna be effective. The yes, problem you, is man. when you Jesus. turn the fucking ball over. All right. I don't know an exact stat. This yeah, I'm just throwing out up. there, but I guarantee at least 80% of the time you're throwing the ball deep, taking a shot on that first fucking play. Hey. We run the ball every single time on that play. Why can't we maybe do a play action and throw it deep? On third down too many times after you've already wasted first or second, yeah. they call the safe conservative play safe to screen your field bullshit. goal position. The screen bullshit, man. I need us to stop getting in third and long fucking situations as yeah. it is. 
I need more third and shorts where we, we're simply doing the simple shit that's going to be effective. Not this? all this little cute, fancy trickery shit that we think we're going to fool the damn defense when they already know. They already predicting what the fuck we're going to do before we hey, fuck. How about move. this? How about we're, this? We're too predictable. How about this? I'll take second and long if we made a good attempt on first and 10. Yeah, yes. if, 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 but if we don't it's even a, try, it, it's the whole ball yeah, no, analogy. I, I, uh, I'm, I'm JB, I would settle for a spare, try, try at least try to get a goddamn strike. There you go, and that's, that's what I've seen too many times. You call the conservative bullshit, and yep. then it comes back to bite you in the tail because you really don't know what to call. Yep, that's the problem. I look at things. I, I promise you, I'm not trying to make it seem like Justin is the end all be all right now because he's not. But I look at some of the calls that some of these other quarterbacks get of where I feel not Justin's production, but Justin's ability. You can't, you, you, you're not telling me that if you're 12 yards out, you can't call a play for Justin like you do for Josh Allen? Roll out or go run somebody over, get the get the first. No, thank you, JB. That that's kind of the point that I was making is that like right now, what we're doing with our play calling is just not conducive to uh to, to and you know. To an extent, I think that there was some good play calling, obviously, on Sunday. But, like, it's just not conducive to Justin's strengths, especially in the red zone. And that's why I'm saying, you know, on first down, with a quarterback like Justin Fields, who's really good at getting the ball downfield, it's okay to take some shots. It's okay to be in second and ten because you know you have a quarterback who's capable of getting you those five or six yards on second and ten there to you put go. you in third and manageable. That is not predictable as work, RPO runs. It will work for the Bears. Yeah, even, even I don't Flus even want to see them on half time. Like that. I don't. I don't either. Because even Flus even fucking said majority of Justin Fields' yards came from him scrambling. Them RPO runs where motherfuckers ain't blocking or they even on the same goddamn side to block for him to get more yards. What the fuck are you doing this for? Like, stop running them dumbass, predictable ass RPO plays where they know where the fuck you're going with the ball, and yet no one's over there blocking for him. Like, right, well, let me let me, throw in, Chicago, let me let me add to that because. There is, uh, there's an NFL history argument to be made here, which is that RPOs used to be not plays that you call. They used to be Brett Favre saying, okay, Donald Driver, we're calling a run play, but if you're open, I'm just going to sling it to you. And there's something Doug Flutie did a lot in the CFL, and it's something that eventually became more of like the, oh, okay, you know, we're just going to like incorporate this into the playbook. Like that's kind of, kind of something Doug Peterson did a lot with Nick Foles, uh, which worked, but like. Ultimately, when it comes to RPOs, that should be the quarterback's decision to just on the fly be like, you know what? I don't I don't want to hand it off here. We got an opportunity for a big play if I throw it. Those are the times that I want to see RPOs. And that's when I want to see Justin really take control of the offense and just kind of, you know. Listen, the, the way Lamar right. Jackson runs his, uh, the, the way the Baltimore Ravens run their RPOs, Lamar Jackson does a great job at fooling the damn defense into thinking he's going to run when he, he dump it off to somebody who's wide the fuck open more times than not up the fucking middle. So I'm just like, can we just oh, fool, can we make them think we're about to run the ball with Dustin and then we just dump that bitch off or throw it down the damn field? Like, can we design some more plays like that, man? This, yeah. this shit ain't well, fucking I mean, rocking. No, I, I, this I'm, is the thing, guys. The, the play calling, it, it's, it's, we're hoping it's going to change. It's not going to change. Guess That's he's a problem. fucking tool. He smoked, I mean, he, 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 he smokes crack. All right. You smoke crack, don't you? You smoke crack, don't you? That that is Kevin Warren talking to fucking to Luke Getzey right now. There were some good calls but, this week. I mean, I'm, I'm let's start, let's start getting into some expectations. shout outs, and I want to do shout outs a little bit differently though, because I want us to do our predictions for next week and our shout outs as well. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Chicago, if you want to start us off, oh, man. I was gonna real quick. I want to. I, I have to make an apology before we yeah. start shout out. I'll make it quick. I promise. Okay. <laughs> Oh, you almost had it. You're going to be quicker than that. Yeah, you lost your chance. All right, well, I'll, I'll just throw it into my shadow. <laughs> just kidding. Hurry up. Go. All right, great. No, I uh, I want to say it's not really an apology, but I'm I'm fully on the, like, let, let's ride with Justin train. You know, I know last week I was given a little pushback on Caleb Williams and whatnot, but now I'm very much, you know, I, I, there's just too much video evidence that this kid is special and you, you got to roll with him. You could really make a really good offense around him. And uh, sorry, DJ Moore, uh, my the cornerback who joined us. 
But um, I'm 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 rolling with Justin, and I hope Ryan Poles does the same. That's all I wanted to say. That, listen, I, that DJ I, I love Moore our guy DJ Moore, but he's always hated Justin. I so. mean, yeah, I mean, he gave him a lot of shit last week, and I was on the show talking to him about this. Yeah, he he would not, not let up, man. I was like, wait, what? You think Mr. Bisky is right, so, better than I mean, Justin Fields? Yeah, I don't know. He was saying some off the wall shit. I was like, man, I I like you, man. You you you're losing me right now. You're killing me with this. Right, shit, well, buddy. easy. You gave the apology, man. Start off with your shout outs and give us your predictions for next week. Well, first of all, I want to shout out the Chicago Bears. And uh, I mean, I, I'm, I'll shout out Eberflus two wins in a row. Good for him. Sorry if you don't like him, but I like when the Bears win and he led us to two wins in a row or he helped us win two games in a row. I, I shout out to that defense for being stifling, a couple interceptions, a fumble recovery. Um, Shout out to the chat, always active and nice. Shout out to myself for making a really good highlight video again. That was a um, very good sorry, highlight video. I, Even though you did throw Terrence off with that ending. Oh, I yeah. I don't understand I, it. I, don't understand I love the ending, by the way. I love the ending. It. It. I thought you'd like it. Hey, look, we, I love the when ending. the Packers lose, that is such well, a good it, thing. It's not even it, just it that, too. Joy. The Packers lose and the Giants won. Therefore, the Giants, who are, exactly. in my opinion, are worse than Green Bay, yeah, move back up for those drafts. So that was a win. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's a it's a double whammy. And also, I do think Matt LaFleur was crying after the game. But uh, uh, we could discuss that later. And that brings me joy, you know. Shade and great. I, I like – He I wasn't like crying I'm, as much as Patrick Mahomes, though, but go ahead. Hey, man. Oh, no, no. He, he, he had a reason. Patrick Mahomes has a point, but at the he same time, man, okay. I've never seen Patrick that, Mahomes. I, I, I would love – look, on my He's show still, tomorrow – Tom Brady did it, so Easy we give him shit for it. I don't blame him. Shout out to my show tomorrow, Easy Does It. Where oh, and shout out to my dog Luna for joining the podcast. Um, and yeah, shout out to Easy Does right It now. because oh, I'm going to be talking a little bit about Patrick Mahomes and a little bit of a you know there may or may not be a bit of a double standard there when judging Mahomes versus judging maybe a Brady or a uh, a Peyton Manning when they blow it on the sideline. Yeah. But you know there's some some sometimes when Patrick Mahomes does it, it's like oh so now it's a bad thing. But anyway, I could go right. on and on, um, and I have gone on and on. Uh, but I will go on and on tomorrow on my show. Uh, in addition to that, shout out to uh, my family. I know uh, my dad tried to tune in. He might have fallen asleep. Uh, and I know my mom fell asleep, but they're still really cool people. And, uh, yeah, shout out to, um, you know, hopefully the idea that the Bears will game plan around stopping Miles Garrett. You know, just don't let him wreck the game plan. And... You know, yeah, I like what y- y'all said about blazing game. Get him in there. Shout out to fullbacks. Pat Ricard made some good blocks for the Ravens, but also, you know, blazing game. I'd love to see him get some action this week. You know, yeah, yeah, I know, Frank, I know. Uh, but shout out to the Bears for winning some games. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get. Let's make it three in a row. Third straight win. I'm done. All right, Mr. Chicago. Oh, prediction. What do you got with the game? Um. I don't think we're going to win, if I'm being honest. I'm going to say 23-19 Browns. Ooh. No, wait. I'm sorry. I added too much. 16, 16 to 14 Browns. That was, a, that was a big jump. Yeah, yeah, no. I was thinking I, I, my, my brain works. Your brain's oh, fucked. Go ahead, Mr. Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Well, first and foremost, I want to give a shout-out to Silky for being on the show, man, being as transparent and as funny as he was, man. And another, another bear – Another bear great that was, uh, you know, giving us the honor and privilege to talk to, you know, give us insight on that 85 Bears team. Shout out to him for that. Uh, shout out to the team, man. I, I, I want to give this team kudos for sticking it through and, and, and closing this game out. Finally being able to finish strong, uh, a damn team that we played three weeks prior that we didn't finish off on. And we, were, and we ended the damn uh, fourth quarter with three, four minutes left being up 12 points. And we, and we let the goddamn game get away from us. A lot of times we do get in our own way where the other team didn't win. We lost the fucking game. So the fact that they knew the, the number one thing to do in this goddamn game was to start fast and finish strong and, and close the game, the damn game out with a win at home. It's being, uh, you know, back to back division win. Uh, it, it definitely, you know, it gave, it, it, it's leaving some, some good questions in the minds of, of Bears fans today. Now, now, now we're <laughs> that transgression was funny as hell. <laughs> but yeah, yeah it, it's, like, it's leaving Bears fans. The 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 you know the, the the wondering minds are now saying to ourselves, man, not jumping the gun here. But what if we do win out? What if we go nine and eight? 
What, so what, we what, lose what, out what, on a very good second what, draft pick. What what a fucking remarkable turnaround it would be it would for be. us to do that. Like it's not how you start, it's how you finish. And if we finish strong like that, we we, we can be on to something. But I just want to give kudos to, to this defense for, for shutting down the goddamn Lions the whole second half. They had 13 points all fucking game. That that's incredible. They were number two offense in the league, scoring points, and then we had 13 points. That says a lot about how you know your rival opponents in your division. So you obviously gonna play them a lot harder than anybody else outside that damn division. So kudos to them. Again, and shout out to better my... than this. <laughs> That's a killer right there, man. But That's yeah, also, yeah, of course, shout out to my to, to my boys from uh, Bears Mafia as well. Uh, but last but not least, I want to definitely shout out um, the possibility, like I said, to see what not only this season will bring us, but what the possibility will be with us having control of the number one pick and the number five to ten pick, depending on how many games we win and, and what, what the what that looks like uh, at the end of the season, it's endless poss- possibilities. The fact that we are in this situation two years in a row where we can possibly get a haul, I can't remember the last time it ever fucking happened to us where we yes. have this much le- much capital and this much draft leverage uh, going into the, the next year's draft or the, uh, yeah, the upcoming draft. So, but yeah, man. It's good times, or it's optimistic times to be a Bears fan right now, especially given all the rest of our goddamn sports teams ain't doing much shit. But that's not sure. Dard just scored again. Oh, I did. Oh, good. Okay. I, 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 <laughs> I slightly take that back then. <laughs> the Bulls the won in some game. The person we have in Chicago right now is an 18 year old kid. Yeah, and the Bulls won some games. Hopefully, Justin will get us back on the next train. So. Yeah. yeah. Um, what's your prediction on the game, though? Uh, again, man, uh, listen, if you all are realistic Bears fans like me, then you know, if you're not concerned about this damn defense we're about to go against, then you ain't been watching the fucking football. Because I am very concerned about a person who I consider to be, if not Thanos, in Miles Garrett, then he's close to it. Voldemort. Uh, maybe. But I, I, he might be Bane to Batman's Dark Knight Rises, like, he literally beat the living shit out of Batman. That was one of the greatest superhero moves I've ever seen in my life. You've never seen a superhero get the ass beat that bad. But I'm he afraid for way. Braxton Jones and Darnell Wright, so I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. I'm going to say between 20 to 13 Browns win or 17 to 13 Browns win. Because I, I, I don't trust Lou Getze against this defense. I do not trust him. Oh, I trust Luke Getzey with my life. I I fucked that guy. Well, you already did, Easy. (laughs) You already cremated. (laughs) Well, man, Easy, you're right back. You smoke crack, don't you? You smoke crack, don't you? Right back. All right, JB, you you know what to do. Um, I I don't even know where to begin because. Oh, man, that ain't good. No, no, it is good because, like, all I can say is when Silky shows up, he shows out, and it just literally gives us that insight because every time we look at the media and stuff, and we know behind closed doors what what we see on the outside is not always a portrayal of what's on the inside, but he gives us that. He takes the risk, and he gives us that 100% pure uncut. And I love him for it. So shout out to Silky. Love talking to him. It's like I can sit and just listen to his stories all day. So uh, shout out to him. Uh, shout out to you, brothers. Always a good time. Easy. Great highlights as usual. Thank love you. when you jump on. Because like, like, like real talk, guys, I don't know if you all pay attention. Easy's highlights are spot on. Absolutely. The cut, like, you know, pretty, pretty. The, uh, good quality. So thank you, Easy, for doing that for us. Really, I, I personally really appreciate that, bro. Like, real Absolutely. Time. Um, now, um, <laughs> my violin, I guess. Frank, we do a top yeah, you, 10, right? You don't get the, yours is more like a freaking, like, I don't know. 
a, a, a solo. You, a solo I solo. love what you do, though. So change nothing. Like a, sa- a, a saxophone well, well, solo. <laughs> right, but I, look, I'm not Bradford or Wynton Marcellus, so I ain't gonna. But I, I, we've been we've been doing the top ten, and it's been doing okay. I just don't want to forget anybody new. Um, I first and foremost want to shout out Manuel Valverde. Haven't heard from that brother in a minute. He came in with a really really good uh, text at uh, eight oh six. So him first and foremost, because we haven't heard from him. Now let's get into it. Jeremy Bowman, Crazy Ace, Jesse Cortrell, um, Dr. Truth. Hey, Dr. Truth was on point. Dr. Truth is becoming one of our P1s. He is, yeah, uh, absolutely is. Chris Edgerton had chimed in. Uh, Franco Dowd, I wonder who that guy is. He's pretty know, That guy's crazy. That guy's crazy. Keep yeah. Sperry, thank you for chiming in. I um, uh, said Jeremy... Oh, uh, she, nope, that's us. God damn, I got a lot. Sorry, Bob. Yeah, so I'm going to keep scrolling and like mindlessly talk. Oh, Aunt Stewart chimed in. Thank you. Uh, Trey Shy. Trey Shy chimed in with some good content. I said Keith Sperry already, right? Uh, Skylark, Skylark99 came back, chimed in with some good content. We appreciate you. And I want to say Lorenzo Clemens. I know he had chimed in. Our resident Big Ten and a uh, Big Ten referee down there in Nola representing. Thank you, Lorenzo, for always chiming in. Love that brother. Um, I think that is it because the chat was lit, but a lot of people were recurring. Uh, Jesse Cortrell. I haven't talked to Jesse in a while. Thank you for chiming in, Jesse. And I believe we are good. Shout out to uh, my moms. You know, if we got one person watching the show, it definitely should be my mom. And um, shout out to you all, U4, SB, UCW Athletics. And my prediction, Frank, can you hit it? Three to two? I no, didn't get no. anything, dude. Oh, I had sent it to your messenger. I didn't get it. That's what I was. You didn't get it. That's, did, you, did you send it to like an Instagram message or maybe? No, you're, you're just your your regular oh, message. Facebook it. message. So let me let me see let me see if I can play it and it'll play. For the fight, man. prediction? Yes, prediction. Pain. <laughs> it's not no, really a number, but you know, remember that. I remember so that. three to nothing. From Rocky T. No, actually, my prediction is I got the Browns winning 24 13. Oh, wow. 24 13? And let me tell you why. Joe Flacco came off the bench, off the couch, and carved up a very good Jaguars defense, in my opinion, considering they were 9 3. Yeah. And they got into a shootout, 31 27. Yeah, it was towards the end of the game. Yeah. Towards the end of the game. Mop up time, right? Maxville definitely. Was trying to battle back and 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 well, Trevor and threw three, game. Trevor threw three picks. Yeah, that hurts. Joe Flacco threw three touchdowns, one pick, three hundred yards passing. That scares me because you know what we haven't seen. We haven't seen that quarterback that doesn't give a damn and is going to throw it anyway. And a veteran, Super a veteran. Bowl winning quarterback. That's he, what Joe Flacco he does. He does. He going he gonna throw that bitch. I just want to point out there were also there were a lot of wide open touchdowns against the Jags. Like I'm saying, like Jags played bad. The, Not the Jags played anything horrible. against them, but Jags especially, especially bad. early on. Yeah, they, they did, especially early on. But here we go again. We have the propensity for certain people in our safety positions that wear number four of being. Out of <laughs> here we go. Wide wait, 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 wait to be way to be so subliminal about it. Terrence Terrence loves that shit. We all know. I'm, I'm just keeping it real. Terrence is officially wiping his ass with his Eddie Jackson jersey. Because <laughs> the last time <laughs> the, the 39 if, or the four. If memory he serves, 39. if memory serves, last time the Browns played the Bears, did the Browns have seven sacks against Justin's and 13? Seven, seven sacks, 13 hits, and something like 16 pressures. Easy. Hey, listen, listen, that was Justin's first start. And, and, I, and I equate that start to, to – you learning how to drive, or you driving for the first time, taking your driver's ed test in a goddamn school bus. He got mauled the fuck down. Every down. I thought he was dead a few of those hits. Hey, guess what? He kept getting up. 
guess what? I've been like, fuck this shit. They're better know. this year. Yeah. Just as better, but they're better too. I agree. It scares me. I listen. That's like, why I said we still have that team. Frank, that team will run the ball right at Miles Garrett. Let's yeah. run Justin Fields right at Miles Garrett. We, we need to tire they ass oh, all the way out. I need to see like a 17 play drive to tire this addiction. fucking defense addiction. out. Addiction? Yes. Mm. Addiction. Pain. If, if anyone's seen that old wrestling movie, Ready to Rumble, where they were yeah. talking to like Sal Bandini, how you how you go and beat them? You you don't attack their weakness. You go right at their strengths. Go you right run, at them. You, and I was just like, that's probably what Getsy fucking does. Let's go. You know, hey, Miles Garrett is right there. Let's run it right at fucking Miles Garrett where he throw. Yeah. Make, yeah. Make, listen, if you make if you make him stationary, that's when he's most dangerous. If he got a ship left and right, now you irritate him, and now he can't he can't beat Great. the dominant. Fucking force that he's known to be. Well, why not just like block him with two or three every time? Every he's time. That too. Every time. Every time. All right. Yeah, so, and I mean, like, but now it's on me. What, what we you got? You could score that way. Like, you could you could have a good offense that way. Like, gonna, you could have a good offensive day. I'm gonna give my shout out starting not off. So Silky screen, D. Lo- love 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 the interview with Silky D, man. And like how he even said, dude, he just keeps everything real. He doesn't bullshit yeah. anything, and it's great to have on as a guest. Um, all you guys. Thanks, Easy, Mr. Chicago, for jumping on. Always a pleasure having you on, JB. Always on. Seems it's always you and me. I'm still gonna give a shout out to our guy Foul, who's still recovering from that train accident. He's improving, so hopefully he'll be back with us soon. No rush. As much as we all miss him and Grogu, you know, maybe we'll just tell him to put Grogu on one day. Just to fucking just put a full picture screen of Grogu on here. That'd be pretty funny. Um, I know a lot of our people would be happy. Um, shout out to this other old guy who just waltzed right in here again. Who's sick? I hope he gets better, starts feeling better. Cause yeah, man, you sound awful, man. I hope hope the best yeah. for you. Thanks, Doc. Thanks. And I will give shout out to the Chicago Bears. And as much as I'm up in the air on what I want, I want a winning culture. Don't get me wrong. I love them winning division games. Would I be mad if they lose every single game and then beat Green Bay in the last game of the season? That I'm fine with that, honestly, because. Yeah. That'll get a good draft pick, and we're still beating Green Bay. But I want production. I want just production. I want Justin getting better, just not good enough where we're going to keep Getsy. Because I Getsy is the only fucking clown that I am going to say has to go. And as much as I'm saying, yeah, I wouldn't be mad if Eberflus went, but I sided with the other people and saying it's like the team is playing hard for him. They're they're backing him. They are. You no, know, I I've actually spoken to a current player who told me how much he backs him. You know, hey, it listen, is what I'm, it is. But listen, Frank, I'm gonna tell you this much: playing against this damn Browns defense, I need Justin to do exactly this much. <laughs> just ignore the fuck everything that he is saying. Just go do whatever the fuck. I would not be mad if he just goes and calls the game himself. For this I, game. I need him to get the, the fuck out of Dodge. Run, um, but my my prediction on this game, I am gonna give it to Cleveland. I am gonna go seventeen to seventeen to fourteen, Cleveland. It's a close game. I, I do think our defense is gonna help us make this a close. No, I'm gonna game. take that back. I'm gonna go twenty-one to seventeen because I think Justin will do some good stuff. <laughs> with still, so 21-17, Cleveland. Again, like I said, I do think the defense is going to help us stay in this game, but our offense is not going to help us sustain being in this game long enough. Defense and, is too damn good. Yeah, the, the defense is playing really well. And so they, they're they carrying us for the most part. But because of our inept and inconsistent-ass play calling, I, I can't trust Getsy ass against yeah. this monstrous-ass defense that don't fuck around, man. They they don't fuck around. I'm really scared for Justin. All right, so I'm about to pick up the rear uh, for the shouts, and I got some, I got some important things I want to say too. Uh, first of all, shout out to my man Fifty Grand Silk for coming on today uh, on a whim. I just talked to him in the morning. I said, "Well, why don't you come on tonight?" And he said, "All right." 
And y'all, y'all know that ain't easy to do because usually Sil be like, nah, <laughs> nah, I ain't fucking with y'all. So big shout out to him, man. Uh, shout out to you guys uh, for jumping on easy, Mr. Chicago. Then, of course, JB Frank. I appreciate y'all too, man. I'm going to fight through this shit and I'm going to be back to Norman in a couple days. But what I did want to, what I did want to address, and then I'll get back to shout outs. What I wanted to address is we've been at this for what, three years? I think I'm three in years. my first year still. I'm just getting to my first year Thank you, Dr. anniversary Peter. right now. And we've been bringing some pretty fire ass content and with some fire ass people with fire ass insight. And fire ass segments. However, even though we have hundreds, hundreds of supporters, maybe even thousands of people that support the Chicago Clubhouse Network, and I appreciate y'all. How many shirts have been bought? Mm. How many hoodies have been bought? We want your support. We need your support. Please take the time to buy a shirt, hoodie, uh, shit, socks, anything, any fucking thing, and support our sponsors. That helps us. That helps us. Go get more. Scott Hopkins, I appreciate you because I know you went out and you got more the other day and you sent me the picture. We definitely been buying a lot of mores. Shout out, shout out to Scott Hopkins for doing that. But we need everybody to do that. That's going to help us bring fire ass content, fire ass guests, fire ass segments. That's going to help us. Some of this stuff costs money. And we need to keep generating money in order to keep bringing this stuff. So please, please, please support us. Support us. If if you fucking with us, fuck with us. We need it. Now I ain't getting on here begging or nothing. I fucks with you. But we need that support. <laughs> we need that support. We need that support. Go buy a hoodie. Even if it don't get cold where you are, buy a hoodie anyway. <laughs> buy, buy it as a Christmas present for someone who who's in a cold climate, buy a t-shirt, buy socks, buy those uh, stretch pants that Frank that Frank has. Uh, come on, don't do that shit. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah I do the slap, though. <laughs> yeah, I had to make sure you guys heard it. <laughs> but we need that. We need wow. that. We need that support. So we can keep bringing you the, the fire-ass shit that we bring. All right. I'm going to get off that soapbox. I'll continue my shouts now. Shout out to everybody that was in the chat. Everybody that contributed to the chat. We appreciate y'all. However, if you were watching the podcast, but you did not get in the chat, that means you are officially a lurker. Right? L for love. Good times. Good times. Yeah, no, I love. love I love. Y'all are fucking lurkers. But we appreciate y'all anyway for putting up with our foolishness and listening to us talk and talk and talk. So thank you. Thank you. Um, and shout out to each of our sponsors. Visions, which is on 119th and Loomis. Visions is it can be an event space, it can be a club. You go there, watch the Bears game, they have screens all over the place. Support this place, support this business. They have great chicken wings. And aside from chicken, they have Philly cheese steaks, they have chicken sandwiches. It's good. The food is good as hell. Support, support this spot. That helps us. That helps us. And if you go there and you mention my name, 
You get a drink. Hey, imagine going there rocking out our hoodie. Right. Shit. <laughs> and a free drink. Right. There, there it is. There it is. So make sure you go out there and you support Visions. Support Hugh. Hugh is on Cermak in uh, between Wabash and Michigan. Support Hugh. You go over there, mention our name, you get a drink. Simple as that. We need that support, though. In the zone. They're the ones that have the uh, hoodies. They have the shirts. They have the, the stretch pants or the leggings. G get, get some. Get some, please. Support us. Um, and Moore's beer. They have great beer. Great beer. Thank you, JB. Support it. Raise your standards. Support that beer. Some good Ooh. shit. Yeah. Eventually, we're going to give Frank some, too. I, I spoke to a Mariano's over by me, and they are going to order it. Oh, shit. Wow. Okay. Great. Contact them and get them in their store. They said, if you're going to be the only one who buys them, then you're going to be the only one who buys them. I was like, I'd buy them. So Great. Get them Great. in them. Excellent. And shit. Uh, Christmas is coming up. Buy humbug. <laughs> <laughs> My point in saying that is the Chicago Clubhouse Network is is looking to have a Christmas party at oh, Visions. Oh, do at tell. Visions. I'll be there. No, I won't. We, we are no, you won't, dog. You're all the way in California. You ain't gonna be there. Are we have it in California? Uh, maybe I, I, I doubt it. But you got to have a vision. If I was going to be in town, I definitely was going to make an appearance. That's for damn sure. Well, yeah, it's it's uh, it's in the it's in the preemie stages right now, but uh, the planning is in the preemie stages. But um, we want to make it happen. Maybe after Christmas. Maybe it'll be an after Christmas party. I don't know, but we are in the stages, the the beginning stages of planning that. Also, I want to shout out uh, my homegirl, Jalene, uh, who thinks she knows everything, but she really don't know shit. We say we don't know shit. She don't know shit. 95% of the time, I am right. And 5% of the time, I am not wrong. But shout out to Jalene. Good math right there. Shout out to her for thinking that she knows shit, but she don't really know shit. That's funny. And I, shout I out to this that. fucking sickness. I don't oh, know what this shit that. is. I don't know how I got it. But it's been keeping me up at night. My anxiety has been throughout the fucking roof. I haven't been able to sleep. I think I'm off of about five hours of sleep in the past three days. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, man. Being sick is no fun. Even if it's a fucking cold. Yeah, it's not fun. Even if it's a cold, it's not fun. No. So I'm saying that to say, man, take care of y'all selves, man. Absolutely. I'm I'm 48 years old. I can't be getting no cold. <laughs> I can't be getting no fucking cold. Because a, a cold can take me out. My immune system ain't what it was. But anyway, this ain't no medical show, so I ain't about to get all into that. Uh but yeah, man. So I think I'm doing my shout outs. That's it for me. Uh any 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 uh anything y'all want to say? No. Just, just shout out to the to the Clubhouse Network and the Clubhouse Podcast again. Man. I hope Justin survives. I hope Watch he does, Easy does it tomorrow. Easy does it tomorrow, six o'clock uh Pacific, so eight o'clock central. And with that. You got to decide whether you're a wolf or a sheep. Yeah, that's going to be Fields with Cleveland right now, man. I'm you scared. have to decide if you're a wolf. Miles Garrett is that wolf right now, and I'm afraid. For yeah, and I forgot I forgot to put my prediction on top of that. My prediction is 24 to 21 Cleveland. I hate to say it, but I don't think the Bears are going to win that game. They're going to make it competitive, though. 
They're gonna make it competitive. They're just not gonna win. Yeah, I I definitely agree with that. So, uh, for my guy, Mister Chicago, Easy, Frank the Tank, JB, I'm T Nick, point guard, quarterback, whatever the fuck you want to call me. Say me out. This has been a Chicago Clubhouse Network production. My hands are up. It wasn't me. (laughs) My hands are up. You're still here. It's over. Go home. Good night, Zimbabwe. I am home. (laughs) Zimbabwe.